has never happened well, to us hello, before. Hello, la, la, la. This, la, la, la. Uh, this has never happened before. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is, uh... Oh, oh, we're sorry. There, it just it, hey, it, forty-two seconds after the hour, you you're gone. You you are you, gone. You're gone. I, I don't know. Everything had to to reboot. It's rebooted and now now back to the to the crap <laughs> that you heard. This has been a test of the emergency dumbass broadcast system. Will you see if your mom can give my resume to Dennis Phillips? Because if I could get in a Broadway show, then I would have done it all: film, television, and theater. The only thing left to be radio. That's just for ugly people. Let me get one more. Uh, Hello. Hello. I just, but am I on the radio? Oh, dear. Yes, you are. I, could I just uh, suggest to your California listeners, mm. that since the polls are still open, that the they... The polls are open. Yes, for the governor of California, that they vote for Don Geronimo, especially if they're using the punch card ballot. They should stick their dipstick in Don mm -hmm. Geronimo's mm -hmm. hole. Well, that's certainly one way of looking at it, and, and we all hear, thank you for that. Can I just say one more thing? I'm not sure, but okay. I just want to say, f*** Lisa Remedy. She's not that hot. Oh, no, no. Uh, stop. Stop. This is disgusting. Yeah, it is. Why did you do that? I mean, no, come on. Be, be real for a second. Explain yourself. Can you? Yes. Why did you do that? What? I mean, you behaved so badly just now. I, because, uh, yeah. You know, come, come on. Well, guy to guy, come on. Why? 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 I must be drunk. Yeah, th no, 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 you don't get off that easy, pal. You're not drunk. Now, why did you do it? Come on. What guy thing made you do that? Uh, Farfalotus of the blowhole. I would no, say. no, no, that's not it either. Come on, you know, what is it? Swollen taint. Oh, jeez, you know. Hairy nipples? No, that won't do it either. That won't do it. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Look at that. Well, it's a little late for campaigning, but... The polls all are open till 8 o'clock on the West Coast. There are his supporters. There they are. They are trying to influence the election at the last minute. Look at them. Vote Arnold. Based on a true story, he was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself. A man of faith. A man of faith. And a soul torn apart. Viewer discretion advised. And good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Hare Horn. And all the ships at sea. Hi. Proud to bring you the second half century of Burbank. It's Don <laughs> Geronimo and Mike. Whoa, there. Yeah. Thank you, Robbie. And hi, thanks for listening, everybody. Don and Mike show. Brought to the auspices of Westwood One. Well, they're trying. I'll tell you about that in a second. A new episode on this Tuesday. Tuesday. And it's Rocktober 7 -erd. Right. You can call us. I'm not guaranteeing we'll answer, but you can call 877-365-3636. That's the number. We don't give it out often because, frankly, we don't want your calls. I'm kidding, of course. We want some of your calls. You're half kidding. We only give out the number occasionally, so congratulations, you're a member of the Secret Club. Uh, from Canada. Yeah, Rob hates Canada. Frankly, who can blame him? 800-636-1067. Washington, D.C., 202-432-1067. And uh, here he is. Number 50 for my man, Biff. There he is. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. There he is. Is anyone missing? Hey, what happened? Shut up. Did you wash the ass today? Someone called for a doctor? So much to cover here in the beginning of the uh, program. Yes. Uh, Mike's beloved Red Sox won. We will... Discuss that and give you the chance to sing your song. Yeah, I will not be uh, entertaining you with any of the new jargon, as I am not fond of it. I am not fond of uh, cowboy up. I don't like that. I don't like. I don't like any jargon that gets attached to things. Good, you know? good for you. I don't. I mean, and I'm. A, you know, I mean, this has been years that I've been rooting for this team, and I'll. I'll, I'll maybe give you the. The old Channel 22 Springfield song that they used to play when the Red Sox would come on, which is the Put Your Feet Up song. You remember that. I've been like singing that, that for that, years. That's now. the one I wanted. Hey, hey, Rob, would you do me a favor? These lights right here, would you shine them so they're not shining in Mike's eyes like <laughs> like he's on some, some type of interrogation here? Yeah. We want... We want these to be on bright on the equipment, and maybe this one right here on the equipment. The bulbs are working. Uh, hey, and, yeah, they're all replaced. Oh, That's and, pretty and, cool. No, I have to, there's a story behind that, okay. which is really our lead today. What's that? Let's see, Cameron Gray. Cameron Gray. Cameron Gray. Cameron Gray. Cameron Gray. Cameron Gray. Phone number. Buzz, I got a list that's like 18... 18 different regimes of employees ago. Try 872. 872. 
Uh, well, he's on the telephone, so mm -hmm. we should tell him that some very important people are calling him. So I want to explain to you how things get done. He's busy. Around here. <laughs> there it is. Okay. See, someone said someone's important calling, Cameron. Mm -hmm. The party call, Cameron. He's the, Hi, it's Cameron. the de facto program director. Six Hi. minutes after the hour. <laughs> Hi, Cameron. Hi. Well, I wanted to say thank you for it. Uh, we mentioned yesterday that uh, in the sophisticated <laughs> studio that we broadcast from, it, 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 I wasn't going to notice it until you pointed it out. Now I feel like my corneas are being burned. <laughs> that, uh, we had, uh, I think, 18 track lights that are in this room, and, and yesterday 12 of them were burned out. Yes. Uh, came in today, I was happy to notice the light bulbs had been replaced. Hey, and here too. And... We have to thank Cameron, the de facto program director. Yeah. It's a very volatile position being the program director of this radio station. There's no job security. No. Uh, no. I'm always packing. Cameron <laughs> yes. uh, apparently went to somebody in the company today and said, Hey, we uh, in the main studio where the DJs broadcast from, there's no light. Okay. We need some bulbs. And they said, That's too bad. You can't have money for light bulbs. Right. So Cameron went out and spent his own money. No. What was the total outlay for the light bulbs, Cameron? Uh, I spent two hundred and thirty-eight dollars. I believe. So that. it was expensive. Yeah. I, I didn't. They're five bucks a pop. Yeah. But, really? But still, relatively speaking. Yes. Yeah. You're talking about a <coughs> billion dollars. You know what he's got right there? No. That's the PD cough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the PD cough. That is the PD cough. That's how it starts. <laughs> We're familiar with the PD cough. What it really means is that eventually he will die young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to betray two confidences. Here's why, and I'm just going to say them now, and hopefully both of you guys will feel better, because I, I, I've used this myself. When I'm uh, feeling insecure about something, I just say it, and it, and it helps it to go away. Mm. I know Cameron is petrified that he's within inches of being fired. Really? I know this is a fact. What, why are those rumors circulating? No, I heard it from Cameron through someone else. Cameron, how true are those? I mean, do you, you really think you're going to get the X? Uh, this is news to me. Oh, okay. All right. All right, well, he's putting on a good front. Yeah. But I'll well, tell that, you. I, I understand that. Happens, do you know yeah. something I don't, Don? What's that? I know. Do you know something I don't? All right, you're going to play this game. That's fine. We will accept that. <laughs> No, no, I don't know. I mean, listen. it's his job that's on the line. He, he can play it any way he wants. I don't know. Listen, Cameron, I don't know nothing. I just know that I was told by more than one person that that you're not feeling totally comfortable. Up really? There. Yeah. Well, life is good. That there's some pressure. <laughs> okay, well. There's always pressure, but life is good. Hang in there. Okay. Thank you, Buzz. Uh, and, hey, and, you know, I, I mean the same. I'm just trying to give you a, a pep talk here. No, I appreciate I, it. I like Cameron being there for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. I, I like having Cameron at the helm. Anyway, so I, I thought, you know, I, and I've heard, like I said, from a couple of people. I want to go out and party with Cameron. Sometime. Hey, tonight's poker, if you want to come, Mike, you promise me. Oh, you I will. I, not tonight, but I will do it. I swear to God, I will do it in the near future. But here's, the, here's the thing I knew, do know, that, that Buzz has flipped out about turning 50. Oh. Buzz is really flipped out about turning 50, and you won't hear him deny that like Cameron just denied the other thing. Really? And I know he thinks. It's a tough birthday. It's true. It's true. It's tough for Buzz. And Cameron, I, I hope, uh, I know that you're what, 21, 22, something like that? Uh, I'm actually 32. I hope by the time... Jesus Christ. Now that makes me feel old, because I remember when Cameron came to work here, he was eight. I know. I hope by the... When I first came to work here, I couldn't go to bar remotes with surf. I was that young. <laughs> I hope that eventually you, you, grow the, uh, you grow as a man inside where you're able to admit that you're terrified of being fired day to day. Okay. Don't, don't worry about it. And you know, Cameron, there's nothing to worry about, but it never hurts to keep that resume up to date and use the company's laser printer. God, right. color printer. Yeah, yeah. Right, Rob. Yeah. Sorry, Rob. That, that was a dig, wasn't it, Rob? No, no, no. <laughs> no. It wasn't you? No. Okay. But just thinking, who told me that about Cameron? Yeah. Who told me? I'm just trying. I know I got. I heard it from two separate people. Well, you told me, and I, 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 I remember you told me who it came from, and I forgot because when it. That's you know when it goes through your giant like Brita water filter, yeah, because uh, you know I, I don't pay attention to where it, where it originated. But, no. I, but I thought I just turned to Rob's. It's that's how we kept the partnership alive for eighteen <laughs> years. It was God, it comes from you, and as soon as it comes out of your mouth, I treat it as fact. Was that you? Well, no, no, no. Oh, I know who it was. Do so you think you caused us a bit of a stir now? No, I, I hope I didn't. I, I hope I did. Not. I hope that uh, Buzz feels good about being fifty. I, see, I've not had the chance to to counsel. Cameron in private because he's never brought this up. And I was talking to Buzz today. Yeah, you counseled uh, me. Buzz said, I'm, I'm a little down about this. Well, I might as well ask a very important question. And since it's out on the table right now and we're discussing it, and I know this is, uh, this is always very awkward for employees when I ask you this, but um, where 
does Cameron stand on the Donnie scale? And he's thinking, and he gives these things. He's uh, uh, yeah, I, I really want, and I legitimately do not really know the answer. We may have discussed it, but I, I don't know. You want me to to, to uh, what what barometer? Uh, okay, you got uh, what would you say? You got Farber down here. No, you got Smoky Rivers down here. Okay, so right. Would Smoky Rivers be the bottom of the barrel? No. They're uh, all so yeah. they're all clustered down at the bottom. Berkowitz, Mason, well, the guys that, that you work for. Kingston. I, I have to. You have to make it the guys that we've worked for. All right, th then he would be the Smoky Rivers. Be the Smoky would be the worst. <laughs> Smoky would be the worst. Smoky would be the worst. And I don't know if we've had a, a best. Hi, hi, Charlie. What about Chuck Beck? Chuck Beck, I, Charlie. Chuck I Beck. swear to God, <laughs> I was going to say Chuck Beck. I was going to say because Chuck Beck is the only program director that actually really practiced vendetta against. All right, but hold wow. on. Let me throw a wild card in. <laughs> oh, Jeremy Coleman. Yeah. Because now you're not talking. This guy Chuck Beck that Mike and I worked for. He had a vendetta against. I know that all disgruntled employees say this, but he really had a vendetta out against us. Yeah, but you know what? He started but, his vendetta after our asses were out the but door. If, but if we're going on just bare ass stupidity, who's the dumbest program director you and I collectively have worked for? I would have to say Jeremy. Really couldn't program his way out of a paper bag. All right, so Jeremy at the bottom, and yeah. who would the best? Is there a best? There is not. There is not a best. No. Uh, Therefore, if Jeremy is a zero, I would give uh, Cameron, a, a feel very positive about giving him a, a, a two. <laughs> two. That is, Cameron, if you are listening, I cannot tell you he has endorsed you. No, I'm kidding. That's an overwhelming endorsement. I'm kidding. I would give him a solid four. That's awesome. That's and that, is, and that is a you. real... He should know no. the list doesn't go higher than five. <laughs> oh, no, it goes to ten. They're just Does it really yeah, go to ten? Yeah. It goes to ten. It's just I've never met him. Yeah. I thought we changed that scale in the mid '80s. <laughs> I've never, I've never met him. Uh, anyway, Cameron, thank you very much yeah. for uh, for buying the light bulb. Thanks, Cameron. here for, here for the studio because they wouldn't let you uh, uh, pay for them. That's uh, uh, now. Here's here's some more uh, some more news for you. Uh, Westwood One, all right, the company that uh, <laughs> syndicates our show. Right. Westwood One gave us this contest yesterday, this matrix contest, which was a, a bit confusing. But it's simply you dial a number and, and it, you get a one in however many people listen to the show chance of winning a trip to Los Angeles to go to the premiere of Matrix Revolutions. We happily got this message from Westwood One today. Your phone calls have blown out our phone lines. Wow. Yeah. I love our listeners. Please give the new phone number, which will handle the much higher volume of calls. Uh, so you guys didn't let us down. That you know, anyway, you slice it looks good for us. Yep. Yeah, and it was with one. They had to be sitting there going, "Well, now this is uh, this is this is uh, you know, when Imus does a contest, <laughs> seven people call. Well, no, the, the, the bottom line is everybody else on the network they'd used that number for contests before. Yeah, and that's that. That's what it. You know, they finally maybe are getting an idea mm -hmm. that they've. They've made the right decision. The dam has always has always held. Now that they're up there putting fingers in numerous dikes, and still the thing just they had to shut it down. So, win a trip to the premiere of Matrix Revolutions in Los Angeles. Call a different number than yesterday. We apologize, but it's only because you guys called so much. The new number, which can handle the strain, and let me dial it myself first. <laughs> and people can enter more than once, right? This was a fun experiment yesterday. So if they're not sure, they could call again. So this should be a... It, since we've not announced the number, mm -hmm. we should get through. Let's see. Charlie Boreal. Hi, Charlie. Let's not get Thank carried you. away that the, the new number is going to take the volume, but also... For your chance to oh, hold on. Let me, let me hear this. ...including Aaron Hotel for three nights and passes to the premiere of The Matrix Revolution. Plus, 20 first prize winners will randomly... Could they have gotten the sexier woman to voice this? ...DVD. Wow. ...available in stores October 14th from Warner Home Video. To enter, you must be 18 or older. I feel like I'm I could a sex do a, phone line. I could do a sexier female voice. Age and daytime telephone number. Why Thanks. can't we get What's that lady that we call? Hi, baby. <laughs> Finish by pressing pound. <laughs> Hello, baby. Hi. I like her. Hi, if you entered yesterday, you don't need to call back. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's the warning that the network told Charlie to pass along. Very but good. I'm telling you, just if you want to make double sure... <laughs> 
you'll want to call 888-635-0643. Besides, one of the rules was you can enter as many times as you like. You're making trouble. No, I'm not. You're making trouble. Making no trouble. I'm glad. This is a good prize from Westwood One. Uh, valued at $3,500. Mm -hmm. Trip to Los Angeles to see the Matrix Revolution's uh, premiere. And if you need that phone number again, go to WJFK. Dot com. It's up there. Very good. So thank you very much, everybody, and sorry about the screw up. I, you know, it's it's good for the show that yeah. one got so many phone calls and Absolutely. they had to they had to switch servers. Um, today is uh, Buzz's fiftieth birthday. Ooh. Happy birthday, Buzz. Thank you, Mike. We do kid Buzz a lot of, uh, about his age. You know, that's the thing I hear the most when, when I do go out and make one of these big appearances. Uh, is it people come up like and say... Like the J.C. Penny appearance, yeah. which we never really talked about. Two or three of the dozen people came up and said... Uh, you thought gosh, you were younger? You, you don't look nearly as old as oh, they say oh, you are. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. That was a joke. I guess a good thing. Yeah. You know, still later in today's show, or maybe not of today, we're jammed up today, aren't we, Robbie? Maybe tomorrow we'll have to do that segment. Brush with Buzz <laughs> for, to find someone who actually went to J.C. Penney Saturday morning to see Buzz collect his check. <laughs> you know, years ago, Buzz was falling apart, and Buzz has uh, rebounded to I be have. in a very, very good physical condition. Yeah, and best of my life. You are also in physical condition, and I'm finally getting myself in physical condition. We're trying. And uh, Rob is, is uh, planning on getting himself in physical condition, too. Well, really? I'm planning to plan. He's planning, He's planning to plan. Uh, and the only guy really on the show, associated with the show, is completely letting himself go, is Charles <laughs> Loring Broyle. Charlie Broyle. Right. Yeah, he's getting fat. I mean, now he's not fat like we are. No. But he's... He's getting fat. I always kind of thought metabolically he wouldn't have to worry about that. And yeah. it is... Um, I find a little bit of comfort in the fact that he's starting to balloon. <laughs> so... So here's the deal. It's Buzz's birthday, and I know Mike has a presentation for him, but I have something. Buzz, I really don't, Don. Uh, that's right. Someone special's coming in. Yes. Um, <laughs> One of my employees. I did want to, uh, and I want you to know my employees did not do this for me. I did this sure. did this myself. Uh, wanted to share a moment with Buzz, especially after speaking with him, and he told me how 50. And one of the things Buzz said to me is, and I hope you don't mind no, sharing no, this, Buzz ahead. said, the thing is, God damn it. Maybe he said, God damn it. Maybe he didn't. He said, <laughs> he doesn't use that word. He, he uses other words. Yeah. So he said, when, you, when you're 50, it's like, if you were going to do something great, you would have done it. Right. That's so what you're doing is what you're doing. And, you know, even though, uh, as, as I stated yesterday, you know, <laughs> I won't be doing this when I'm 50, <laughs> but it, it's you and everybody has different guidelines. That's right. And for you, perhaps 55 will be where, where you say, no, I don't think so. Or maybe it'll be 60. Or maybe, yeah. it, or maybe it'll be... What are you now, 45? 45. Right. And with you, you're 45? 44. 44. <laughs> and, uh, you know that. What? You know that. I know that. <laughs> That's just some payback. I'm a booby. That's, I'm the baby of this little truck. No, hey, That's hold good. on right here. Well, I know. He's 10. How old are you, Robbie? 32? 32. Oh, my God. Anyway, I'd Buzz, trade for that. Buzz, I do, happen, I do happen to say... <laughs> wouldn't trade for that. Oh, God, you're killing me, Rob. <laughs> Rob was looking right at me, waiting for me to say something, and I just pulled off it. Didn't say anything. Good for you. Well, Buzz, I was going through some tapes. Because, cool. you know, out of everybody in this room, all of you guys, my dearest friends, and I really mean that, I've, I've worked with Buzz and known Buzz the longest. You have? So... I remember back to when Buzz turned 30. Okay. When Buzz also had a mini crisis. <laughs> I'm not surprised. He, he couldn't handle 30. 30 wasn't bad for me. 30 was a big deal to Buzz. I hate them all now. Not as, not as big as this 50 is, but 30 was a year old. Mm -hmm. And Buzz, you said, well, gosh, what if you get to 50 and you realize that what you're doing, this is what you're doing and you're stuck with it. Yeah. Well, I have news for you. Mm -hmm. And it holds true for everybody in this room. Okay. This is it. <laughs> yeah. This is as far as it gets. And I have news for you. 20 years ago, uh -huh. right around your 30th birthday, you were doing virtually the same thing that you're doing now. Really? Much as I was, much as Mike was, just in a different form. Wow. Let's go back. Yeah. 20 years ago. Very good. 1983, late 1983, early 1984. Okay. I'm only going to play you just like five minutes of this scoped. It, it's five minutes of... Uh, it, no, I take it back. It's like a, it's a minute and a half. All right. This is from when uh, I did the morning show in Chicago, mm -hmm. and you'll hear a little bit of me. We turned well, it give up. The call in. When you ever t you talk like that, give the call in. Because I think people that are, were in that area, they always like to know. D96. D96 was the name of the radio station in Chicago. WBBM. Right. And you're going to hear a little bit of me with the record, and, and then it's, it's Buzz 
as Mike Elston. This was cool. the heyday. So here you go, Buzz. You really do oh, it's a, a number one? Here we go. It's best just about two minutes long. Please call in any time with these with these fabulous illusions. <laughs> okay. What is your number one radio station? B ninety six. Hey, how about a B ninety six shirt for you? Hey, that sounds great. Right, say goodbye, Larry. Goodbye, Larry. Make Larry disappear. We'll work on it. <laughs> hey, great music, though, huh? Such oh, a yeah. rule breaker. Great, great music. <laughs> they hate the fact that you talk like once the singing started. <laughs> yeah. Then you had to play a jingle. I love it. Here comes the jingle, yeah. This is Dr. Geronimo. Say, I'd like to meet you and pinch your chubby cheeks. This Sunday, I'll be at the uh, Holiday Inn O'Hare, 1230. If you want to benefit from muscular dystrophy, I'd like to meet you. That was a lie. I didn't want to meet you, buddy. Of course not. But I don't like those jingles. Between every record. Yeah. I only played a couple yeah. records. Is Billy Idol, a man who wears a dog collar and looks darn handsome wearing it. It's uh, <laughs> well, 21 and a half past 7. I'm Don Geronimo along with Mike Elston. Were you watching Channel 5 by any chance last night? No. Uh, I, th I think it was right before 8 o'clock. You know when they come on at the end of a show and they have like Ron Major say what's coming up on the news? Oh, yeah. Here's exactly what this guy said. He said, well, it's raining like holy sin outside. Luciano Pavarotti plane. Let me just stop this for a second. <laughs> you see my point, Buzz? Yeah, really? I do. It's frightening. What really has changed? No, nothing. I'm running my mouth. The only, the only, the only difference now is you have two guys running their mouths. <laughs> yes, yes, while, indeed. While, while you are desperately trying saying, yep. to, to get a word in, but. <laughs> But there's a little more of Buzz doing the actual news here. Very good. Right in the beginning. He's going to be diverted away from O'Hare, but he'll land tonight at 10.30. Details on Channel 5 News at 10. Ooh. Struck me as kind of stupid. Had people in suspense for two and a half hours. I didn't there. even know that Luciano Pavarotti was coming. What? You have something, Karen? Except just before Cheers, you might have noticed that he said um, Luciani Pavarotti will take Chicago by storm. And then, of course, after Cheers, they came on and said the storm has taken Luciani Pavarotti. I love Channel 5. I was doing some groundbreaking radio back there. Channel right. 7 is High Energy now. Morning Show. 22 minutes after 7. Go. Did the mayor and Ed Verduliak accomplish anything when they met yesterday to divvy up some clout? At 727, winds are north at 6. Humidity is 84%. It's 67 at O'Hare, 73 at the lakefront. I'm Karen Hayes. And I'm Mike Elston on B96. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Betty. As usual, this time, <laughs> it's time for Slee's Bucket News. We got the... And, okay, that's yeah. where we go back to the uh, to the DJ stuff. But there was... You know, so there's, there, at some point, the birthday is going to be addressed as far as 30? did, Or was that just when he turned 30? That was on the day he turned 30, and there was no... You don't have any banter about him being no, 30 or it anything? It was none. It's I, just I mean, a reminder that, for me, really nothing's changed. You sound exactly <laughs> the same. Yeah, tape's a little fast, but, yeah, basically we do sound the same. You sound yeah. very different, but the, the tapes are parsed up, too. No, and I was really pushing, though, back then, Mike, on WBBM-FM. Good morning, because I had to talk so fast, because I only had a certain amount of time to say what I wanted to say. Right. When we were doing the morning show at WABA, isn't... Isn't that the way the, the we call it a skimmer? It's it's mm -hmm. a uh, machine that when you key your microphone, the uh, cassette recorder starts. And whenever you duplicate that onto another piece of tape, it always seems to run a little bit faster. Yeah. Or, well, or were you sounding like that? And we really sounded like that when we were oh, at WAVA. We really sounded like that. Like we were talking like that? Okay, it's fantastic. Because we were. All right. A little but, of both, but yeah, it was because, higher energy. Because when did we start relaxing? After we left that station, <laughs> when we realized high energy is jive. Okay, it wasn't until we we and, and even now with what we do now in some circles, that what we what we do is considered too high energy. High energy talk radio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we've right. had we've had some dicks say, "Hey, the show's okay, but slow down." Yeah, yeah. there's too slow much. Uh, we we've always hated that know, air. I know there's a lot of you out there listening saying, "Slow down." <laughs> when are you going to put your f foot on the gas pedal? <laughs> this is the slowest show I've ever heard in my life. Well, we're moving at the speed we're moving at. That's so right. so Buzz, that's uh, that's my no, uh, great memory. Those were great times. It was a quick twenty years, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure was. Yes, it we're was. Uh, and gosh, you know, here I, I think I've got a cover because I gave Buzz a gift and, yeah. a, and a and a card and and Wonderful. pulled out some tape from 20 years ago. But once again, the golden boy trumpets me and well, let me turn the trumps you. Yes, yes. Uh, excuse me. Well, I was going to say trumpet only because you have trumpets. Oh, ready. we trumpets have trumpets. You. All right, let's let's go right to the golden boy, uh, ladies and gentlemen. 
Mike O'Mara of your Boston Red Sox. <laughs> Thank you, Don, and congratulations to the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Uh, more pain to come. Uh, <laughs> I would like to bring in my number one employee and uh, a person that really has assisted me in so many of my endeavors, the Golden Boy. Can we bring in my butler, R.J. Diaz, please? Raymond? Raymond Diaz. This Raymond, is not can a, you come in here? <laughs> this is not a joke. No. Buzz, why don't you come over here? I'd be happy to Mike's do that. butler. This is for you, and uh, I'll put my feet down. Ugh, okay. Got to go to work. <laughs> come on in there, Raymond. <laughs> All righty. Buzz, why don't you sit down over there? We'll have uh, Raymond come in and get in between us. There he, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Raymond Diaz. My butler. Raymond. Hey, now, where's the you. suit? That's his suit. That's that's the way. We don't have, we don't require, uh, like, a business suit around the house. It's a uh, black casual, like our job. <laughs> that's the way it goes. Hello, Raymond. Wow, look at this array of Hi, guests. Raymond. Good afternoon. So, Happy here is Buzz. Thank you. Doesn't, doesn't he sound like a butler? Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. 27 minutes past the hour. Uh, RJ, let me ask you, on behalf of everybody, how's it working out being Mike's butler? It's a real blast, actually. <laughs> there you see. Could he say anything else? He loves being in my employ. He, I mean, how could anyone not? It's really kind of a nonstop party. It's a, it's a part-time gig. It's not, uh, not a full-time gig. And uh, we work very well together. What's the most demeaning thing Mike has asked you to do? Well, I don't think we'll bring that up on the air. You can go ahead. I, you can share. Uh, 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 the life's an open book. Actually, right there hasn't really been nothing demeaning. Uh -huh. It's just uh, after his long nights of festivities, sometimes it gets a little carried away. But it's... Yeah. it's well, I think what he's probably talking about, and, if I, and I know him. God, I know him. Um, <laughs> he's probably talking about the fact that sometimes uh, late at night, when he lives uh, on the other side of town, he will have to ferry me home first because I live way out. And uh, I just won't drink and drive, so I I require him to uh, be the wheel man. Thank you. I'll, I'll pick you up. <laughs> no, drop me off. Drop oh, me I off, got you. usually. If, if if the if the night oh, is if oh, the night is late, it's a late night, and I haven't come to a successfully joint. found another ride. So if he, you get my drift. So he comes to the joint and he drives your car home. Yeah, uh, yeah. He unless would drive. you've picked up. Yes. Oh, honey. Exactly. But we've also there have been many times when uh, a bunch of us have gone out to uh, breakfast uh, late at night, and then, but you know, quite often I'd say there are probably ten or fifteen times uh, Raymond has uh, has driven me to my domicile, and uh, and and that's terrific. And there have been uh, odd jobs, sundry jobs that have been done, and uh, you know, this really is. I think right now we're we're taking what RJ does uh, as far as I'm concerned we're elevating it we're moving it into because uh, we had discussions we had you had joked on the air you know are you going to have your butler go out and get uh gifts for buzz and uh, like a day or two passed and one day I picked up the phone and it was RJ on the other end and said, uh, "Are you really interested in uh, me doing that?" And I said, of course, "Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course." And really, all of these gifts, although Buzz, they're from my heart. Yes, because this is my right hand man. Do you know what I they know. are, Mike? I know. No, <laughs> RJ. I, I have a general idea, like it's a this, a that, but I don't know what the specific items are. I what I, I I left instructions. There was, of course, a price ceiling. Of course, that uh, was the most important fact. And then I ex instructed RJ, "Do not purchase." gag gifts. I said, buy things you think. He is a big supporter of the show. You know that. He's listened to the show for years. Right. Buy Buzz things that you think Buzz will really enjoy. Oh, this is great. And, uh, you know, we had a couple of consultations. Would this be appropriate? I think uh, there was a yes, there was a no. But in general, um, my man about town, right here. Your butler. My, uh, what do they call What's another name for a butler? Gentleman's man? gentleman. My gentleman's gentleman, Don. Thank you. My gentleman's gentleman, uh, actually. Uh, Your house boy? Did, no, I, you can't. Look at him. <laughs> no, you can't call him a house boy. No, that's that's fair. You know, I'm a little insulted by that, man, actually. I, I think you've got to apologize. I have a question for, for Raymond. Yes. That I'm going to hold, hold up and simply give me a yes or no answer. Don't let Mike see it, please. Just yes or no. You're his butler. You would know. I am believing it, it is a yes, but I don't have any exact uh, detail to make that claim. Come on, show me what the question was. <laughs> Does Mike get laid? <laughs> Just curious. He but wouldn't be around me when that happens. Yeah, but I mean, uh, good. Here, he's witness. <laughs> here's here's what he's I'm imagining. He's witness things, but I mean, no, no, really. Here's what I'm imagining. It's some some morning, and uh, you know, it's ten o'clock, maybe, and, and and he never sleeps you're, over. You're in, no, no. I'm not indicating that. Mm -hmm. You're in your boudoir. Yeah. Suddenly there's a knock on the door. You know, the young woman says, after, oh, the first thing she says is, I'm timing. Yeah. <laughs> but, but after that, she says, uh, oh, oh, she says, oh, 
Who could that be? And, and you know, you jump up and you, you and you're so you're panicked by you. You throw on her robe. He's not throwing me under the and bus go, here. Go to the door and and you say. Uh, Raymond, now's not a good time. And Raymond's standing there with nah, the with the uh, you got it all wrong. with the mop and with the vacuum cleaner. You got it all wrong. And, and he's not throwing me under the bus because really he's uh, sworn to secrecy. This is not anything he had to sign. This is uh, what an honorable gentleman's gentleman does. That's right. Sometimes in the morning, when we're there, uh, R.J. will come in. He will raise the blinds and uh, say good morning. Bring and he will bring us fresh, fresh squeezed orange. <laughs> <laughs> and then I. And then I will play with my trains. <laughs> no, but he's, you have, he's usually long gone. But you have a butler, and he's here now. He's the only individual that has a key to my house. He is the only person that has a key to my house. And that is the truth. And to your heart. And to my heart. I trust him, I trust him implicitly. You build trust after all this time. So now let's go to Raymond the butler for the presentation Wonderful. of Look Buzz's at... birthday gift, courtesy of Mike O'Mara and... Raymond, if you wouldn't mind, make sure you say every time, courtesy of Master Romero or courtesy of, of Mike uh, is fine. Mike is fine. Mike oh, thought you'd like is, you know, that, okay. that type of thing. I'm, I'm as excited about this as you are. Buzz. And now, happy birthday. Very oh, good. This is great. Yes, Buzz, in behalf of your wonderful birthday today, mm -hmm. Mr. Romero has asked that we take care of a few things. Okay. And let's see. I know. There is, there is no chronological, or shall we say, relevance to any of the packages here, but I'm just deciding which one should we try first. All right. You sound like let's, the butler? Let's go for this. One. Okay, before the cards. Well, yeah. actually, yeah. if you would like to open the cards first. I you want to do the cards first? Which would you prefer? Are the cards funny, RJ, or can he save those for later? Uh, they're okay. I didn't nah, want to stretch nah. it too much with the humor, because that's what you guys do. Come on. We don't need the cards. Okay, well, wait. Come on, wait, just clap his hands at RJ. <laughs> no, no need for the cards. Yeah, and open the first package. Right, what do we have? What is it, Buzz? It appears to be a clothing item. Ah, hey, cool. What is it, Buzz? Oh, well, it's rather intimate. Well, first of all, it's a, it's a, a long sleeve, no, short sleeve, uh, like, T-shirt. What yeah, size, yeah. Buzz? And it's, uh, well, it's extra small. <laughs> no, no, no it's, it's medium. It's a medium. Which is perfect. Thank you. you. That'll, that'll fit snugly. It's, a boys, boys. it's a boys' medium, right? And some silk boxers with uh, $100 bills on them. Hey. RJ, what brought you to purchase these gifts? Why did you think Mike would enjoy these gifts for Buzz? <laughs> well, you see, the boxers, as the next gift may approach... We'll have some relevance. So. Oh, very good. Oh, uh, I, I explained to RJ the T-shirt. The, the Buzz Tommy likes. Uh, excuse me, RJ. I'm talking. <laughs> um, I, I explained uh, to Buzz that uh, to RJ that Buzz likes his clothing to fit tightly, and that he's a sexual man, and that uh, <laughs> satin boxing shorts might be appropriate. Yeah. The dollar bills. Totally his his choice. Your call. All Would right. not have necessarily been my choice. We'll talk about that later. How many gifts like are you it. presenting today, RJ? Well, there's uh, two additional boxes, but there are several things in both of the boxes. Very well, let's wow. get right to it then. Wow. Right, Jump going for it. for number two here. Okay. Open it up, Buzz. This one up. All right. See what you have. We're in a medium sized box with snakes and alligators on the outside. Very nice wrapping, wrapping paper. Yeah. RJ, do you wrap it or is that paid for like at a mall? Again, okay. this is courtesy of. Very well, small. All right. <laughs> what, did you get a deal? You don't need to give them a plug. <laughs> and Buzz is opening it in. What is it, Buzz? Uh, another box inside. It's a, it's a fifen and filter, whatever that is. What is that? I don't know. RJ, right. can you explain? Why is it a pipe? It's a pipe. It's a pipe. It's a pipe. I guess. And, the, and don't, get, don't be confused with any of the past goings on in the show. This is really a meaningful event. Right. Uh, real pipe, uh, this yeah. is a real pipe. Absolutely. <laughs> this is the nice. kind of pipe a 50-year-old would use. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's... You can put anything in that pipe, Buzz. That's oh, why. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Very nice. And another box Good within choice. the box. What do we have here? In the same box as the pipe is a pipe stand. A pipe Very nice. How nice. Very that. dignified. Thank you. And again, that would be so you could mount me, it on your... Let me rest the pipe in the pipe stand. All right, moving along. Come on. Here we go. I'm All getting right. bored. The, uh... I'm getting bored. You're boring me. That's lovely. What's, what's the other gift? We wish okay. to see some other gifts be opened. All right. Well, what... And the third package, which uh, will go along with the satin shorts, I believe. You All right. understand. The third package. The third package. A slightly smaller package, but again with the snake uh, wrapping paper on it. He's tearing through those uh Perhaps those you may want to keep that box standing straight up. Okay. Even with his arthritic oh, hands. The fluids. Hey, there are indeed fluids. What are they, Buzz? Uh, from the body shop. I have massage body oils. Mm -hmm. So you and your honey can uh, rub down each other. Oh, man, that's excellent. And citrus blend oil for okay. massage. That's nice. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. And a, and a gift certificate. There certainly would be one more item in the box, I believe. Oh, there would. Down in the, further in the, the uh, tissue paper here. One final small bottle of... Uh, it's a, a lip, a chapstick, but it's made of hemp. 
<laughs> it's a hemp chapstick. Very Perfect. nice. That's very, terrific. Very nice, very RJ. Thank you. Very I mean, terrific. excuse me. Very nice, Mike. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Buzz? You're yeah. welcome. Well, you're thank welcome. you, Mike. And uh, wonderful gifts. I was very... I thought you'd like all those. You, you did a good job. Thank you for remembering. These thank are all wonderful. Thank and they're you. They're legitimate very gifts. Uh, all yeah. those you can use. I can't wait to see you in that baby blue sweater. Can and will. Very nice. Very all right. Nice. Happy thank birthday, you. Buzz. Thank you very much. You can much. read the cards later. It's I will. important to read them. I will. I'll read them during the break. All right. Thanks, RJ. RJ, we're all done here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'll see you uh, to settle up the bill. We yes. just put it on my account. And RJ, you getting the paper there? That's good. <laughs> That's good. You did a fan. fine job. I'm very pleased. Very pleased. See, now, don't give me that look. You did a good job. I'm very happy with the gifts you got. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much. Hey, good day to you, sir. Good day to you, RJ. Good day to you, sir. All right. Bye, then. Okay. There he goes. He's leaving now. There goes Mike Take Butler. Care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mike's Butler Raymond. Thank you, RJ. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you. There you go. Oh, I am pissed. Why? <laughs> Why? He did great. He could have done a lot better. I'll talk to him. He did fine. It's his first time. These are very learned. Nice. Buying Thank your gifts. By you. your birthday next year, he will ace it. <laughs> Buying your gifts. He'll be fine. It's the thought that counts. I hope you enjoy the cards. I will. Very good. Thank you. Cards that Mike hasn't seen. Now, did you even sign them? Uh, no, he signed them for me. <laughs> <laughs> Raymond signed, he signed them for me. He said that they are not over the top funny, but they're they're lighthearted. Uh -huh. uh, Buzz, without open one, don't don't read the card. Just read the inscription. Okay. Well, uh, and many more, Mike O. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure, Buzz. Glad to celebrate your 50. How often does a guy turn 50? Not every day, Mike. That's terrific. And then the inscription on the other one is, not to worry, it only gets better. Mm -hmm. Oh, sign RJ. Oh. So it's, it's two what? cards. Hey, hey, it's hey. One, it's one card from you hey. and a card from RJ. That's very nice. Thank you. That is unacceptable. That is completely unacceptable. Really? That says to me you'll want to see an itemized breakdown of the uh, purchase yeah, item. Because absolutely. Really, you shouldn't be buying RJ's for card. Right. No, no. I, I'll have a word with him. Oh, no, please, please, don't. please don't. For me. So, so hard to get good help these days. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you might want to remember that. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Did he give you a personal card from him? Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah. It's signed RJ. Okay. Happy birthday, but, Buzz. All right. But yeah. only after he'd given me one from well, you. Yeah, fine. Fine. <laughs> fine. <I'm> happy. <laughs> no, you know, I'm just I'm, I'll speak to him during the, the commercial break. <laughs> speak to your butler. Yeah, it's, you don't give a personal gift. Those gifts and cards were courtesy of Mr. O'Meara. Yes, they were. I don't understand this. What? Bring him back. I, mean, we, I got one minute. Bring RJ back. Yeah, he'll, he'll understand that he's made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Bring him back. How dare he? I hope there's, you know, I hope he's got a, I hope he's got some sort of uh, explanation here. And Buzz, that pipe, that uh, that old time Fred McMurray pipe looks good on you. Thank you, thank you. It feels looks, good. That looks good on you. Hello. Uh, hi, what were you thinking? Good afternoon. Oh, what were you um, thinking a little personal thing? I mean, couldn't you've done that on your own time? Well, I was going to, and since you didn't want to read the cards on the air, I kind of felt that probably I could just give them both of them now. Did you know that we weren't going to read the cards on the air when you brought them in here? No, that's no, why I was only was going to hand them the one read... from you. There's a chance we would have read both cards on the air. All right. I think you know you've made a mistake. That's all <laughs> oh, I ask. Gosh. I just ask that you don't repeat the mistake, okay? Uh, yes. All right, thank you. Okay, you're, 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 you can go. You may go. Thank you. Let me just say, if he was, and I don't have servants, Mike, but if I had one, hold, mm -hmm. hold on there, RJ. <laughs> I'd make him go over to Buzz's studio, mm -hmm. X out RJ, and write Mike O. <laughs> Capital idea. Can you do that right now for me? Capital yes. idea. Thank you. Buzz has a Sharpie over there. Yeah. What's that? I'm sorry, did you, do you have something else to say? He wanted to say something. I'm sorry, your microphone wasn't turned on. Just as well. <laughs> Capital idea. My God. You just try, you try, you try, you try to train. All right, Buzz, is he over there yet? Yes, he's just arrived, and I have the pen ready. And, and uh, is he doing it now? Yes, he is. Our talk is over. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And Mike, signed Mike O. Now. Signed good. Mike o. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Now you know how much Mike cares. All right. All right. Thank you. And you'll have everything ready for the big party this weekend? <laughs> Mike, Very good. Mike wants to know if you'll have everything ready for the big party this weekend. Absolutely. Thank you. That's a yes. Okay. Thank you. It's terrific. Okay, good work, RJ. You made uh, you made that right. I just want everybody out there to know <laughs> this is not a bit. No, it is not. <laughs> That's the disclaimer. This is not a bit. Mm -mm. Okay. And that is wrong because <laughs> I know because that is wrong on what level? On no level. Yeah, I don't think so. You're busy. 
I'm extremely busy. You got a lot of things happening. It's not like he does laundry or anything like that. Hey. <laughs> now, I'm just thinking, you know. So has he I'm washed, thinking out loud. Has he washed a dish? <sighs> yeah, probably. He has. I don't know. I'm not sure whether he's uh, he's put things away. He straightens up. I don't think he's actually physically washed dishes in the house. Let the boy buttle. Let him buttle. Let the boy buttle. That's what I. You know what I like? He's got a he's got a certain amount of panache. No, I. Agree. That's what I like. I mean, he he conducts himself in such a way. He's a gent's gent. He is. He he does a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And, but, and that, he's like, you know, can I can I say this without uh, appearing to be too weak in his eyes? He's kind of like family. Oh, no. He's really kind of like family. Has he ever been in your bedroom? <laughs> been in my bedroom? Has he been in your bedroom, your personal area? I don't think so. Area. I don't think he has. Not yet. Not yet. Because you're showing a lot of when we're love. on the road, you're show, you're we've show, slept together. No. You're, show, you're showing a lot of love for a, mm -hmm. a, a salaried employee. Yes. who's yeah. on your payroll? I mean, that's a salaried that, employee. That's wonderful in this day and age. Yes. I mean, look at us. We're salaried employees, and we mm -hmm. can't get light bulbs for our studio. I understand? Yet here you are, <laughs> giving love. Don, it's just like somebody once told me: treat your customers well, treat your employees better. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And I live by that credo. Good for you. And boy, now do I feel dumb. Really? You know. That I actually got in the car and drove to the store mm -hmm. to buy the gift for Buzz. Yeah, how's I know. How's egg on my face. I understand. How about you, Rob? You do it yourself? Handled everything on my own. On your own? Yeah, so nice. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Need I remind you what you two gentlemen have in your lives that I don't have? They're called wives. And when you are a Bill Bixby, you simply... Uh, you know, bring a gentleman's gentleman. When you are a... Uh, My wife did nothing to help me on this, though. It doesn't matter. It's the other elements of your, your life that, that they help out in. I'm Brian Keith. <laughs> Don't you understand? Doesn't it, okay. Isn't it clear to you? Hey, family affair. <laughs> okay, I got you. All right. You're a busy socialite. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a butler. It's, I'm down with that. It's essential. Right. I'm okay with and that. I, and I moved this week, too. I moved uh, to, from, the, uh, from the east to the, the west wing. From that your was, home? That was taxing. Let, let me uh, explain. I mean, that I supervise. Mike moved from uh, down uh, upstairs to downstairs. Oh, really? Yeah, he oh. moves. He moved some bedrooms around. Yes, I did. Fewer stairs. Overwhelming success, I might add. And did RJ do a lot of that? No, this particular move uh, was handled by professionals. Not that he's not professional. It's wonderful. Welcome to Family Affair. Aha! Greetings, RJ. <laughs> <laughs> what is for dinner this evening? <laughs> Which pie? Should it be the blue or the red pie? Time to go out. <laughs> Mr. O'Mara, your choice of condoms. Ribbed, lubricated. I think I'll go with the ultra-thin rib this evening, RJ. Thank you. Press pocket, please. <laughs> ah, what a wonderful evening I'm going to have. You wait right here. He's got one of those little whisk brushes. Mm -hmm. You know, as you stand in front of the mirror and he's, he's doing that thing, get the, one of the hair off your shoulders or whatever. Mm -hmm. RJ, the guests have arrived. Very good. Yeah, right. Draw my bath. <laughs> RJ, wash me. Oh, no. Hasn't gotten to that level yet. <laughs> wash me. Well, happy birthday, Buzz. Happy birthday, Buzz. Thank you all for me, a wonderful birthday. Let me just do a quick check here to see if the other part of Buzz's birthday has arrived. There's more. Oh, oh Buzz. Hello. Hey. Have not heard of their arrival. Her arrival. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. All right. Well, we'll give them a couple more minutes. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Stripper's late. Yeah, we got some. Uh, we got some what? girls. We got some girls. Some girls coming down. Gray Davis. Gray Davis needs to be terminated. <laughs> I, I'm sure you all heard that soundbite with Arnold. Right. He said terminated, terminator, terminated, terminator, eighteen times mm -hmm. in this statement that he that he made. Gray Davis. <laughs> it's erection day. <laughs> yes, you can move forward with me or backwards. With Cray Davis. It'll, 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 uh, the girls aren't here for Buzz after we do the Caller 100. We'll open up the phone lines. We have some other topics, but of course, Erection Day is something, and I'd love to talk to somebody in California who yeah. seriously voted for that idiot today. Yeah, and there, there are many. We had one on the show yesterday. Oh, out there. I know. Listen, he's going to win. Yeah. We've already got the plans in to tape 
the acceptance speech tonight to Good. hear it Good. tomorrow on the show. And it will be, don't you think, it will be just ego out of control, Arnold? He's a shoe in. Thank uh, you. Listen, got a prize for you now, 877-365-3636. Caller 100. Good luck. He's the Don and Mike Show. A few weeks ago, we lost a very dear member of our family. John Ritter was not only one of the most talented people I ever met, he was also one of my best friends. And the shows that you're going to be watching this week were shot just a short time before John's untimely passing. We thought we would share them with you so that we could together celebrate not only his life, but also what he loved doing the most, making us laugh. that Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston like to eat their Sunday dinner naked. Oh! oh. That's true, but the weird thing is they do it at Sizzler. Ow! Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly, Beverly Hills magazine? Yes. Well, I'd have to say that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. It is true, yes. X gets the square. Oh. Red, perhaps right. You can... Yeah. Amy? John Ritter, please. John Ritter. All right, John. If, if you don't like the friends your daughter has and she won't talk to you about it, does Woman's World say it's okay to look through her diary? I don't think it's right for a parent to look through a, a child's diary. I, I hope the trust would be, you know, I, I say no. I don't think it's right. I agree. Well, I agree with both of you, but unfortunately, Woman's World says yes. Wow. You have to do whatever it takes to protect her, uh, is, is how they yeah. put it. So X gets that square. The Don and Mike Show. They wish that they were prettier. Don and Mike. We point out two things. First, tonight, the very special final. He's dead. John Ritter Show. And second, uh, all bumper music today selected by Buzz. Bravo, Buzz. For, from a, a list in about 30 seconds, so. Well, yeah, you yeah. know. I grabbed what I could. No, it was more than 30 seconds. <laughs> but, you, you know, this is what I love about Buzz, the pressure situation. Yeah. I give him a, a thing that's got roughly 126 songs on it. Right. Said, need you to pick eight mm -hmm. for today's show. Uh, really, just need one mm -hmm. right now for this break. Sure. You can come back to it during the break. And, and that was when he selected. So that's, uh, that's for Buzz's birthday. Happy birthday! Thank you. And, uh, we'll be hearing his selections all day today. Is that uh, my understanding? <laughs> I, I, I hope to make better ones in the future. All day, that's it. All day, every day. Hello, Don and Mike Show. I am caller 100. Yes, you are, my friend. And, uh, what's your name? My name's Don McGabe. And where are you from? California. Beautiful. Uh, call it 100. You won the 100 prize pack. Oh, Tom, oh. Tommy Lee Jones movie, <laughs> uh, In Demand Pay Per View. Uh, that is uh, from In Demand Pay Per View Comcast Cable. Plus, you won the uh, Halloween mask of your choice, provided by AnyMask.com, the kind of mask, your kind of mask store. Call www or, or don't call them. If you call them, they won't come. Don't call www. Use the computer www.anymask.com. Thank you. 
<laughs> Ask for the buzz mask. Yes. Ah. Ask for the buzz mask. Thank you. Hold on. Hey, Hold can on. I uh, have I get... 10 seconds here? I want to mention something very briefly. A very good friend of mine, Tim of uh, Tim's River Shore Restaurant, uh, was decimated during a uh, hurricane Isabel. He was completely, uh, all his stuff was destroyed and, uh, through volunteers and everybody helping him out, they've rebuilt and they're having a celebration for that on Saturday and he doesn't have any insurance and a lot of people, you know, down on the water, uh, had, had this, uh, this hurricane just wipe them out and, uh, so they're celebrating this and I just wanted to invite everybody to come down. We're going to have bands down there. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's this Saturday at Tim's River Shore Restaurant. We're celebrating the fact that he is reopened. He's had some problems, you know, getting licenses and stuff like that, but hopefully everything's going to be up and running, and that's this Saturday. And he is the really one, one of my very good friends and a great guy, and I want everybody to come down and say, you know, thank you that knows him. So yeah. the word's out. That's what I wanted to do. Cool. That's sure. Right. I'm sure RJ will be getting the ass, <laughs> RJ, ass, the RJ, ass email out. RJ has actually rebuilt it single-handedly <laughs> for wow. me. That's what he did. Good man. RJ. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's really one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Absolutely. Cool. I see the calls coming through now. A lot of them are area code 916. Mm -hmm. We do want to talk to people, and also not only from Sacramento, uh, also Bakersfield, mm -hmm. uh, Oakland. San, uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area. Right. These are the voters. If you have voted today... <laughs> Call us now and tell us who you voted for and, and why. Um, I'll give you one here. I, I told you the other the, the, last week this thing with uh, with Robbie's uh, son trip. Mm -hmm. You know where the godparents that I had First birthday. that I had a a trump card against my wife. Right. Not that I've had to pull it out yet, mm -hmm. but the fact that there was a family greeting and and Rob and Carrie are family now because mm -hmm. you know the, the thing with with Trip and the grandson right. 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 the godson thing so she was not able to go to this function okay last week the, the right. his first birthday party and i'm just put that away for some time when she says hey i need you to do this and they say i can't i got something important and she says what's more important than mm -hmm. this i can say ah well what about that time so I've got that absolutely my, right there in my back pocket. Beautiful. Well, last week uh, I was mentioning uh, we're talking about Rob again. That uh, I, I have a Frida said I have a certain uh, delight in my voice when I speak to Rob. Being sarcastic that you sound uh, well when Rob calls you're all like cheery, very happy. <laughs> right. And when my mother-in-law calls, I have a less than snappy yeah uh, you know retort. Well, when I answer the phone, well, <laughs> right. I got this note. This card from my mother-in-law, ah. which is a great Trump you to my wife. Very cute. <laughs> Very cute card on the outside. On the card in the front is a bunch of dogs wagging their tails. It right. says, happy tails to you. And then inside she has written, honey, I understand you love me, but that Frida and I have girl stuff to talk about. So you let us. I don't have a problem with that. If I needed you... I know you would listen to my problems. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to talk about sports or radio. Answer the phone any way you want. Aw. Love you a bunch. That's great. Mom. She took pen to paper. Yeah, now. How mm -hmm. great. Hi, huh? this is Don Smothin, Big Prius. How great is you this? You have just won the celebrity boat contest. Oh, that is so nice. How great. For years, you have had a special relationship with your mother-in-law. and uh, You're going to try to take it to that dance. No, I'm not. I, you I, did upstairs. But I do. I, yeah, it's the first thing I said because I remembered... That was the first time I really became aware of how fond your uh, mother-in-law is of you. And, and uh, vice versa. Mm -hmm. Pretty damn good situation. Probably contributing factor in uh, the longevity of your uh, relationship. Yes, if not for my mother-in-law, I would have dumped my wife years ago. <laughs> uh, but this, uh, let me just thank Big Frida now. that this is, a, this is something that, again, I'll be able to file away because I'm sure at some point, you know, not now, not tomorrow, maybe weeks from now, maybe a month from now, it's going to be one of those times I pick the phone and go, yeah, hello, hold on a second. And when I give the phone to Frida, she'll say, I know it's my mom. You're carrying around that card like, like it's an Academy Award. Look at it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, frame yeah. it. Fragile. Mm -hmm. Fra you'll save it. It's a major award. <laughs> sure is. Yeah, and you'd save it. To, you married guys, you know. When you've got something like this, now now the Rob thing is not something tangible. Right. I could just throw that out and say, okay, you, you missed right. Tripp's first birthday party. But this, oh, baby. Wait until there it is. Wait until she calls the next time, and, and my my joy my, my my joyful voice is, is is not as joyful as it is when Rob will call me. Well, now because you've gotten that card, I would assume that you're going to answer the phone differently. You'll probably now that she's given you carte blanche to answer the phone anywhere you want. You will probably uh, answer it. Hello, 
How are you? Uh, that, but see, that'll the wear off. way, perhaps she's practicing reverse psychology no, on because you. She knows me too well that it would, it would wear out after a while. And as a matter of fact, and she was wonderful to send this card. Yes. And, and I was not wonderful enough to call her up and, and say anything. I think I can handle my business on the radio. She listens every day, doesn't she? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure she does. So. Uh, you know, when her schedule allows. Uh, what I've done now is when I notice that it's caller ID and it's her, mm -hmm. I don't even pick it up. I just say, hey, <laughs> baby. Phones for you. Well, it's probably the best way to do it. Right. Yeah. Then you don't have to have that awkward moment. There you go. You got, got it done. You got that pass. Got it done. Got it happening. Have you ever uh, really gone over the top, like when she's called and you were expecting maybe somebody else and you answer the phone by going, what? Um, I don't think so. Not in, not in this age of caller ID. And, Buzz, here's another thing to think about. Okay. When I played that tape of us in Chicago, you were only 30. Yes, that's true. So think about where you were right there, 30 years, mm -hmm. back there in, in Chicago in 1983. Right. My mother-in-law is only 30 years older than you are. Wow. So think about that. If you think about time in little spaces, think, mm -hmm. boy, that from there to getting there seems like nothing. Right. And, that, and now think, mm -hmm. that same space from there to there, from there to BBM, mm -hmm. is the same space between you and my mother-in-law. She's that much farther. Yes, I understand. And... Oh, no, she's that much closer, actually. Yes, right. She's that much closer. Closer to what? To me. To my age. <laughs> closer, closer, to, closer to John Ritterville. Oh, God. Closer. Stop. Stop. Now, <laughs> say you're sorry to your mother-in-law. Oh, I don't mean even anything by I, that. Even, I know, though I know, I, you know. even though I just did that. I apologize. I don't, I'm not using my, my mother-in-law. She just mm -hmm. happens to be the only person I know who will speak to me who's 80. My, my mom, if you ever want to just put a, you know, pop a call into her, she'd, she'd be glad to chat with you. She'd be, she'd be glad. I, I spoke with her just last night. Right. And she said, dear, dear. I, I ha now please don't call me this evening. And she was talking about the Red Sox game. Oh. Because if the, if the game goes late, I won't be watching it. I have, I have a doctor's appointment. I'm getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yes. And a special uh, that the doctor has. He sees uh, only uh, octogenarians at, uh, at 5.30 in the morning. It's half price, isn't it? <laughs> half price. Yeah. And if you feel like really raising your voice, just call Big Daddy, and he's 89. Correct. Wow. Uh, now, listen, uh, wow. guys. Or 87. Oh, hold on. Uh, besides being uh, October 7th uh -huh. and Buzz's birthday. 88, uh -huh. I think. It's also <laughs> Erection Day. Yes, yes it, it is. is. And because we are nationally syndicated via Westwood One... We do have many stations in California. Let's do our own informal exit poll. Good. Let's do it. Let's do it. To call people and, and really ask who they voted for. And Buzz, would you mind keeping track? I'm watching. Yes, I will keep track. Here we go. Now, now we will determine a winner based on this unscientific poll. Yeah, and when you said you're watching, you're what, what are you watching? I'm also watching the election results, but I'll also keep track of the calls. I think that this is more important... Well, Buzz, yeah. why don't you tell us... No, what's important what is Big Daddy is 88, and he turns 89 on Sunday. <laughs> why don't you That's tell us... important. Why don't you tell us what the current results are? Do you have current results? No, it's really too early. You have to remember, they're still three hours behind us, so and we haven't they, gotten anything yet. Are they doing this thing where they're not going to release anything until 11 o'clock East Coast time, so not to screw the voters out there? No, because, <laughs> no, because the, the election's out there, so we'll just wait until the polls... Oh, their, their right, polls I, got, close. I got you. Depending on our results that we get with our poll, will you be demanding a, a concession speech? So for the 11 o'clock news on the East Coast, uh, it'll be real they'll, time. They'll have a winner, and they'll declare the winner when the. Right. But wait a minute, do they do they do that anymore because of the Florida thing? Polls close at eight, right? Here's what they I close at eight. Eleven so hours. Played at eight o'clock. TV stations. TV stations, Robbie, can start predicting the winner at eight. However, we started predicting the winner four months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I read that there's something like three million absentee ballots, uh -huh. and that a lot of those absentee ballots are the kind where you punch the hole. Oh right. no! And so that there's the possibility that this could go on for months. Oh my God! However, we yeah. could right now get the results. How many calls do you think we need to take to, to get a, a scientific poll? Twenty. Well, to really, to really get a, a scientific uh, poll, we we need at least ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about fifteen? What? Uh, yeah, I think twenty. All right, twenty. Twenty would be original good. thought. Twenty. Hello, Don and Mike. What's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy, did you really vote today? Yeah, I voted for Arnold. Hey, I want to say happy birthday to Buzz too. Thank where you. did you where telling did, this Buzz? Yes. Where did you vote? Uh, Sacramento. Uh -huh. Where in Sacramento? I voted absentee. Hey, Buzz, do you have any super hey, tramp hey, on hold your on, uh, hold on, hold on, on. birthday hey, list? Hey, trouble. Why would why would you have an absentee ballot if you're there? So 
I don't have to vote in person? You can do that. All right. Can you really? Yeah, All we right. have to accept even the most mindless of voters. Count is, remember, this, these are Schwarzenegger's oh, people. Are you thinking what I'm thinking already? Yeah. Landslide? Hello, Don and Mike. Who's this? Radio God. Howdy, what's your name? Roger. Roger, where are you calling from? Sacramento. Did you vote today? You betcha. Specifically, where did you vote at? Uh, Newfield Court. All right. You know, you could be making it up, but it sounds legit. Mm -hmm. Who'd you vote for? Arnold. Why? I had to give you guys the pleasure <laughs> of more material. Mike <laughs> does Arnold so well. You know, this is better than Jesse the Body Ventura <laughs> by far. So, see, he wins either way. Yeah. All right, thank He wins you. either way. We all uh, do, really. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Who's this? <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. This is Dave. Dave, where are you from? Bakersfield. Bakersfield, California. A little further yes, down south. Uh, did you vote today? Yes, I did. Where did you vote? At the Cornerstone Church. And you voted for? Mary Carey. <laughs> for Warren Star. Yeah. I understand. That's the Warren Star. I understand there's a real groundswell of support. Get it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In my pants. Mary we Carey. We figure if we're going to get screwed, it might as well be by a professional. There you go. Mary Carey. Obviously, they're big fake teats, but... Right. They're big fake teats. Mary Carey. Okay, Bye. thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, Don and Mike. This is Jeff calling from Bakersfield. Bakersfield, all right, Jeff, where'd you vote today? I voted at the Presbyterian Church. Who'd you vote for? I took the smart approach and voted for Senator Tom McClintock. Unfortunately, all my friends are voting for Arnold. <laughs> all right, well, hold on. That's... Hey, this is getting interesting. Now sure we're is. getting somewhere. Uh, hello, Don and Mike show. Who's this? This is Ralph. Ralph, where are you calling from? Concord, California. Where'd you vote today? Right across the street from my house. What's what? In a, in a garage. In a garage. Well, now, I, I saw that in Arnold's neighborhood, they were doing it in some dude's garage. Right. So I guess, yeah. you know, it's California. I guess you don't have to go to a school. And who did you vote for? Arnold, I yeah, want to make. Of course. I want to get the whole cast of Predator to be governor someday. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> bye bye. I think he's Hello, serious. Don and Mike show. Hi, this is Pete from Sacramento. Pete, where'd you vote at? I voted in Elk Grove at Engine Company 74 Fire Station. See, now there's the info you can rely on. Thank you, right. uh, Pete. Who did you vote for? I voted for every last inch of Mary Carey's boobs. <laughs> Mary I like Carey. the Mary Carey. Mary this Carey. would be a stunning upset. Hi, Don and Mike show. Right. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. Who's this? This is David from Stockton. David, where'd you vote today? I voted at the Moose Lodge. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I love I California. Even, I, All right, who'd I you? Even, I even flew in from Kentucky just to vote. Wow. Who'd you vote for? Tom McClintock. Tom McClintock. All right, I believe wow. that guy was serious. That's McClintock. Interesting right. Uh, in two more calls, we'll be halfway through our poll. This is interesting. Susan. Hi. Susan, what the... Uh, <laughs> Hi, boys. Hi. How you doing? I'm well. This, sound, this sounds like a man. It does. Happy birthday, Buzz. Thank you. Susan. I know this. You're calling from... You the, know me. You're from the Bay Area, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nevada. Uh, she has called before. I no, know. Novato. Novato. Who did you vote for? Where'd you uh, vote? Where'd you I vote? voted at the Ignacio Clubhouse. And who did you vote for? I voted for Arnold, darling. Why? Because I can't wait to see what happens. <laughs> just, for the, just for the fun of it. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's a good enough reason. I what the hell? It's only the uh, most powerful state in this nation. Yeah, yeah it could mm -hmm. be debated. Sure, put a dumb movie star. Let's have some fun. Sure. Hello, Don and Mike show. Who's this? Hey, Don and Mike. Roger here. Roger, where are you calling from? Oki Land, California. Where'd you vote? Uh, some scary psychedelic basement on Harrison Street. <laughs> All right, I believe you. Who'd you vote for? Uh, regrettably, Bustamante. Uh, Cruz Bustamante, all right? Cruz right. Bustamante, right. Thank you, uh, my friend Buzz. We're halfway through the exit poll. Not, What's the result? Not not quite. We still have one more to go to oh, be halfway. More. But we have one for Cruz Bustamante, two for Tom McClintock, two for Mary Carey, and four for Arnold. All right. Hello, Don and Mike. Who is this? This is Matt. Matt, where are you calling from in California? Sacramento, California. All right, where'd you vote? The Chinese Baptist Church. Okay, who you vote for? I voted no on the recall and yes for Bustamante. Okay. All right, thank And you. incidentally, for those people that aren't familiar with how this works, you can vote no on the recall and then pick the candidate, if there is a recall, who you'd like to put in there. That's why you're able to do that. Right. Hello. So, Buzz, that's 10, right? Right. Now we're up to 10. 
Which, so we we got to say ten more. Hi, Don and my. I don't think we have to grill these people anymore about if they did or not. Right. You just say who you voted for. Yeah, who'd you vote for? Hi, this is Jim from Turlock. Jim, who'd you vote for? Arnold, the new governor. <laughs> the governor. <Duh. laughs> Hello, uh, who's this? Don and Mike show. This is Larry. Larry, where are you calling from? Oakland. Who'd you vote for? I voted for Gary Coleman. I always want to have a lawn jockey on the oh, lawn. Oh, stop Sacramento. it. Jesus. F. Lisa Remedy. Jesus. Okay. God. Buzz, I don't think we can count that one. We can't okay. count that one. Right. Right. Uh, hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike. It's Joe from Modesto. Joe, did you really vote today? I voted at the Prescott Baptist Church. I'm afraid we're going to have to ask people again. Yeah. Uh, who'd you vote for? I voted for Arnold. Why? Because all the rest of the candidates are just as stupid as he is, if not stupider. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Who's this? Right. Ian. Ian. Ro Roseville. And uh, where, where'd you vote, Ian? Uh, Post American Community Hall. Who'd you vote for? I'm uh, McClintock. Arnold's a big, fat, fake douche. Okay, thank wow. you. <laughs> Hi, Don and Mike show. Who is this? Now, i got to say, you know, we bitched a lot about uh, the Westwood One. This is one fun part of being syndicated. Yeah, really. absolutely. Oh, yeah. That we can be all the way on the East Coast, mm -hmm. and we're getting calls from California mm -hmm. for people who are listening to the show. We're getting this direct feedback. It's fun. Uh, who is this? Yeah, hello. Oh, are you there? Up, oh, we lost that one. Mm -hmm. We lost that one. Seven to go. Don and Mike. Don and Mike. Who's this? It's Mark from Elk Grove, California, just Where, outside Sacramento. Where'd you vote, Mark? I voted at the, the Folks Ranch uh, Fire Station 510. Who'd you vote for? I, I, I voted no on the recall, and I voted for myself because I figure Schwarzenegger, porn stars, Gary Coleman got no business being there more than I do. All right, now do we count him because he voted yeah, for himself? Yeah, you count no on the re recall. That's, uh, that's a vote for nobody. All right, mm -hmm. hello, Don and Mike Show. Hi, this is Josh. Josh, where are you from in California? Bakersfield. Where'd you uh, vote? Where'd Grim you vote? Hall Road, Assembly of God. Thank you. And who'd you vote for? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Why? Why not? Better than getting screwed by, uh, you know, Gray Davis. Okay. Hey, we have our first serious voter. All right. Hey, my friend. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello? Speak to us. I'm trying. I'm just going to these calls blind. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, right, it's Larry. I'm doing these Daredevil style. I'm <laughs> taking these calls Stevie Wonder right now. I'm doing a Ronnie Millsap thing. Blind. Uh, go ahead, though. Who is this? It's Larry. Larry, wh where'd you vote? At the county office of registered voters. Who'd you vote for? For Arnold. Why'd you vote for Arnold? Uh, I think he's going to win. Okay, there you, there you go. go. Good idea. Hello. Four, four to go. Hello, Don and Mike. Who's this? It's Sam. <laughs> what if I said that he's going to win? Sure, why not? Uh, Sam, where are you calling from in California? I'm in uh, Davis, near Sacramento. Where'd you uh, register, or where did you vote at? In Davis, California. All right, who'd you vote for? Uh, uh -oh. you voted for Bustamante. 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 There's another one, Bustamante. Huh. We got three more, Buzz? That's right. Three more to go. Hello? Oops, line eight, I think, California. Don and Mike. Hello? Hello. Who's this? Ray. Uh, I, I, I voted in the Newcastle United Methodist Church, and I voted for Arnold, and I voted yes on the recall. And why did you vote for Arnold? Because I want to see him pump up Gray Davis. I, I'm getting, more, you get a pretty, I, think we're, I think we're getting a brilliantly clear yeah. picture of this. Two more, Buzz? People love the Arnold. Two more to Two more. go. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello, who's this? Hello, this is Rich. Rich, where are you from? I'm from Sacramento. Where'd you vote? I voted at the R.K. Baptist Church on Marconi Avenue. Who'd you vote for? I voted no on the recall, and I voted for Peter Uberoff. All right, no on the recall, and this will be the last one. Hello, mm -hmm. Don and Mike Show. Uh, Jim from Oakland, I voted no on the recall, and Peter Cabello, Green Party candidate. All right, thank you, my friend. And now, having said that... <laughs> and I really, really think this is kind of representative. I really and do. we are going to project a winner now. Let's go to the 50-year-old news director of the Don and Mike Show, Buzz. Uh, <laughs> what, what do our early returns say? Out of the 20 people polled, uh, one person voted for himself. Uh, Peter Uberoff got one vote. Peter Cameo got one vote. Mary Carey got two votes. 
Tom McClintock and Cruz Bustamante each got three votes. Our projected winner is Arnold Schwarzenegger with nine votes out of 20. That's 50% oh. of the vote. Yeah. So now somebody... 49% of the vote. Somebody them. note this fact tomorrow when they come out with the, with the final result. With the scientific polling. To see how close we are. Yeah, right. we'll save this. No, uh, Rob is actually done all this. Arnold had 45%. 45%, okay. Uh-huh. Uh, you don't need a majority. Followed by McClintock with 15, tied with Cruz with, with 15, Bastamante. Bastamante. Mm -hmm. uh, then came uh, Uberoth and Cameo with 5%. Oh, and the porn star got 10%. There you go. So that's how you do it. Arnold is your runaway winner in California. You heard it here first. Right. We've just announced Arnold is the winner. <laughs> <laughs> that's our projection. <laughs> that's our projection based on wow. our poll. All right. <laughs> it was too goofy, isn't it? My yes. favorite moment was, why'd you vote for him? Because he's going to win. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. That's why you do it. And uh, Back a winner. You know, we got more calls here. Let, let me see if your girls are here, Buzz. All right. Because if not, we may have to postpone them until tomorrow. I understand. Let's look for tomorrow, then. All right, uh, Charlie, let's book it first First break tomorrow. Okay. Cool. All right, uh, Buzz, my apologies. No problem. This Our apologies. Extended. We're dealing with... Uh, strippers. We're dealing with strippers. Yeah. Yes. We're you dealing. cannot rely on the punctuality of strippers. <laughs> now, <laughs> want that on my tombstone. <laughs> you got it. Who'd you vote for? Arnold. Who? Arnold. Arnold. Who'd you vote for? I voted at the Ron Talcott Elementary School for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold. Who'd you vote for? Arnold. Arnold. Who'd you vote for? Happy birthday, Buzz. Thank you. Voted for uh, Arnold. Who'd you vote for? Arnold. I've had enough of that. <laughs> I have, too. Yeah. Okay. That tilts the percentages if we go to 25. No, 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 no. Let's stick with 20. Right. Let's stick with 20. Wow. <laughs> you know, and I, I think you got to count on some of the people that were pretty active that, uh, you know, that were going to vote either against the re recall or for somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, but I really think... I think really... You called it early on. I think he's going to win overwhelmingly. Even yeah. though we are, you know, let's face it, we are doing a jerk-face, dumbass radio show. Yes, filled with satire. <laughs> However... In, the election itself is satire. In that section of uh, that cross section of people, mm -hmm. you had two or three guys who took it serious who said no on the recall. Right. Uh, some morons that voted for Arnold. Some people who didn't sound like they were morons who voted for Arnold. I stand by the Don and Mike show prediction that we are naming Arnold Schwarzenegger the next governor of California. Here, here. Pardon us for not applauding. Yeah. But you know what? Comedically, mm -hmm. we are dancing for joy. <laughs> and if you live there, hey, good luck. Get to Nevada, dude. Godspeed. Get to Nevada. Get to Utah. Get to Wyoming. Get to any of them. To New Mexico. You know, I don't live there. But get I, to any of them states that touch you or near you. I don't live in California. I would just love to know. What this guy did, <laughs> what this governor must have done, because yeah. man, he pissed people off. Sure did. And I don't, you know, I read a little bit about it, but I really don't. I guess it's over wow. a long period of time. Who knows? But wow. do you get the impression? I mean, nobody gives an ass. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And, and you're right. We don't live there, so we don't know. I think P California is so effed up, right? That people just say this is the most effed up state in the world. Throw the guy out. Mm -hmm. We don't care if it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Just give us somebody different. Yeah. Just give us somebody different. Well, they'll be much better off now. <laughs> I think so. now. Here's a call from California about the election coverage. Troy. Yeah, man. Hey, well, how are you guys? Hey, we're doing great. What are they saying out there? Hey, you know, the election coverage on TV is going to start at like 4 o'clock this evening, and the local ABC affiliate, the whores that they are, are going to break away for a half an hour to watch Eight Simple Rules. Well, of course, now you have to, you have to think. What are you going to get the, the, the bigger number with? You've got right. on one hand, maybe you know, and in some ways, this is really grounds uh, ground setting stuff. You know, you, you've got a, a movie star becoming governor, but you've got the last episode of a bad sitcom with a dead actor. Yeah, dead, dead guy. I tell you what, what I what a do. choice. If I was running, if I was running that station, and it, what number station is it out there? Uh, it's Channel Ten, I think. Channel Ten. Here's my advice to Channel Ten: free advice. Swear on my kid's life, this is what I would do. I would run the John Ritter show, mm -hmm. but I would have a box yep. that had the election <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I would I would multitask. Your your modern TV viewer now is is 
very compatible with what we've all assimilated into watching different boxes on the screen. That's right. Damn straight. So you, picture in picture. And you know, and and if Arnold, for instance, wins at like eight fifteen, then we took I, calls from his power base. Well, what you, what you do is, you you put Arnold, you switch him. You put Arnold on the big screen, and then you put the dead guy, the dead TV star, <laughs> in the little screen. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding about this. Channel Ten in Sacramento, you're handling this all wrong. Uh, you, you can you can squeeze blood out of the turnip. You can get ratings from the dead man mm -hmm. and ratings from the stupid man. Well, he might win uh, this election for governor in the recall, but I am already prepared to back the challenger for the uh, the next real legitimate election. I'm throwing my support behind Jackie Chan. <laughs> Excellent. Very excited about yeah. that. All right, we'll see you later. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. And if worse comes to worse, if 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 you're running the John Ritter show uh, there in Sacramento or or anywhere in in, in California, and you, and you have to break through because somebody's won, like Gray Davis conceded with their Arnold mm -hmm. or, or something crazy happened. What you can do, you run a crawl on the bottom, right. just telling you John Ritter's vitals. You know, <laughs> at the time of his death, mm -hmm. John Ritter was right. 40, however we... Sure. I think he was younger than Buzz. Yeah, was look at that. 48? Hey, now, Buzz. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Outlive Turn Ritter. that frown upside down. That's isn't that it. isn't that cause to be happy? Very much so. Thank John you. John yeah. Ritter is dead. And here I am. And you are 50 years old. Look Life is good. Look at that. There you go. If you had come to me three, four, five, well, how long has he been dead? Two weeks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about that. And said, who's going to live longer, John Ritter or Buzz Burbank? Right. Yeah. I would have said, the lead pipe lock of the week. Uh -huh. yep. Put all your money on John Ritter. Sure. <laughs> And look at him. And look at look at Hi. him now. Hi, yeah. He lives. And look at him. All right. He's he alive. Hi, okay. We got a break. We'll be <laughs> listen. If those if those girls don't show up, we're gonna have to. Well, I guess we've already postponed Buzz's thing until tomorrow. That's so. unless they're like walking in right now, which I don't think they will be. Unless they are. Here's here's what we have for you. We do have a good match game today. We'll wait just one second oh. because I I'm sorry, my conscience won't allow uh, me to lead this show, and I know everybody feels the same way I do. What about Roy? Yes. Right. What about Roy? What about Roy? We'll we'll deal with our grief for Roy Horn right after this. Okay. This <laughs> is the Don and Mike Show. The fatty Fred Flintstone sings you music to twitch by. You like it? Fatty Fred Flintstone? It'll be stuff like this. The Don and Mike Show. Don and Mike, anytime, from anywhere in America, 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Oh, what a hoot, and so totally refreshing. And I say bravo to you, sirs. Bravo to Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Bravo, now, congratulations, and bravo to you. Yeah. The good people that listen to this show every day. Mm -hmm. uh, Westwood One. Uh, apparently unfamiliar with, with running a, a network contest where people actually call for the contest. Right. Uh, you guys blew out their phone lines yesterday. So if you want to win the trip to the premiere of the Matrix Revolutions in L.A., this is a Westwood One contest, but it's a contest just for listeners of our show. Amen. Call 1-888-635-0740. Sorry for the change in phone numbers. It's only because you called yesterday and it blew out the phones. Might be a new phone number tomorrow. Good. Not really sure. And congratulations to the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. I didn't even Amen. say that today yet. Amen. Amen. Well, I figure out... Well, now I want to get to this Roy thing. Tomorrow right. we'll be talking about going to the titty bar. Right. For me to pay off the Red Sox bet. Right. And it'll be a good time uh, in the first break tomorrow if you want to sing the Red Sox song... Yeah. You want to, you know, get yourself psyched up for the series with the Yankees. Oh, it's tough. Because, yeah. I mean, you just, you know, it's that feeling of, you get the euphoria and then you get the dread. I mean, it's euphoria and then dread. You know, one thing that pissed me off during that game last night, though, mm -hmm. the announcers, when Manny Ramirez hit his home run, yeah. the announcers go off on him and going, that's, I'll tell you, that's going to get the dugout really upset. Hey, the Oakland A's pointing into the dugout like that. That's really difficult. I'll tell you, that's the kind of showboating. I, you don't like to see... Well, to the best of my knowledge, he was pointing into the Red Sox dugout. I think that's what he was doing. I hope I'm not wrong about that. But they go off on him about, about showboating, and I think he was pointing it like this 
batting coach, you know, saying, hey, you know, wasn't that the way that went down? I saw the replay. I think pointing's allowed anyway. If you wanted to point at anybody, well, but, you, you know, can I point. I can understand right. if, you, if you're looking at the other dugout and you're going, that's really showing, guys. I mean, it's not done in baseball, but I'm, I mean, I really think... I'm a tremendous think... baseball fan, but I didn't feel he was really showboating. He was, you know, he was just getting was emotional and they went, it, they went it, off it, on it him. Just more of everybody against the Red Sox. Well, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, whoever, you know, Steve Lyons is, uh, is a former psycho, is a former... Red Sox player, but the other guy was just uh, was just kind of a tool. Hi, Charles. Hi. Which side, which baseline is the visitors? See, on? I don't know. It, it varies in different ballparks, okay. I believe. Usually, I think it's the first base side, and that's where he, he pointed. Was the first base side. Yeah. But I think in Oakland, I think it's different because of the way the stadium is configured, and I think he was pointing at the Red Sox uh, dugout, but I don't remember. I was trying to dial that in. The other uh, thing they were concerned about is that he didn't take off running, that he stopped and watched the ball, but it was so clearly... A lot of guys do that, though. A lot of guys do that in baseball now. You just bury bonds out of that. You hit the ball, you just stand there for a second. It's like, if you could, you'd pull it out and start you working. Do. Especially if you don't have any that. RBIs. You want to save Hold the on. moment and enjoy it. Here's an inside call on one of these numbers that makes the light go off. Super, Hello? Super secret line. It's Lisa. It, he was definitely pointing to his own dugout yeah. along the first baseline. Uh -huh. You remember where, um, after the collision took place, that there was the skirmish with the fans. Right. And that was along the first baseline. So he was pointing okay, to his own dugout. You. Thank you, Lisa. Very good. good. I just, I mean, it's, and they, they really went, you know, he's taunting, and they went off on him. And I, Let it go. And that, <laughs> Let it go. Won. I'm just, I'm just Let it go. The Red Sox won. I'm just venting a little bit of last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm Mike, still, and you know, I'm really, uh, my stomach is still like. Uh, Mike said to me yesterday, or he said to me today, I came in to call me last night. And yeah, yeah. here's I the thing that's you again. Here's the thing. <laughs> I was half watching Monday Night Football mm -hmm. and watching the game. Because right. I, you know, I'm not rooting against the Red Sox. No. Uh, it was 21 nothing Tampa Bay. And at that point, the two Red Sox guys out in the field ran into each other, you know, and they had the double concussions. Amazing. And the one guy's down on the ground, you oh. know, before he got cowboy up. Uh, and there was like a 10 minute delay. Yeah. So I turned on the football game. I turned back. The guy's still laying there. Mm -hmm. I turned back to the football game. I turned back. The guy's still laying there. I turned back to the football game. Colts score. And I, and then, sorry, it's not my, it's not, I don't have the Red Sox thing you do. Right. I stayed with it. The, the greatest Monday night game I've seen. Wow. There was a football game on last night? In years. <laughs> Indianapolis scored 21 points in the last... Was that Monday night? Four minutes. Yes, it was. Yeah, was then, it Monday night last and, night? And then they won in overtime. <laughs> well, congratulations to you and the Red Sox. And now... The evil empire, and that's right. when you know how I said I won't say cowboy up. I will say I will say evil empire because um, that I like. Listen, uh, Mike, all of this newsworthy. Yes, but let's face it, Roy Horn. Yes, we're laughing, we're talking. Still in the hospital. Roy Horn is still in the hospital. Still critical, young. Yeah. Let's call and see if we can get some sympathy. We're going to be calling our transvestite gay phone line. Very good. See if maybe they can take a moment off and just okay, we do, we're going to think of Roy. I'm so glad you called because I'm ready to let go. Ooh, this wet nasty tranny action is brought to you by CCI <laughs> for only two ninety nine to five ninety nine per minute. And that's fine. Now you want to select names? Build. Hang up now. I I I would love being out on line one. I'll be Michael Hughes. Of course, I thought I'm always out on line one. Oh, it used to be used to be Ken Stevens, and I was Alan Lyman. Yeah. If you cannot make okay. a selection, you will automatically be connected at only five ninety nine per minute. Amen. Mm, welcome, baby. Welcome, baby. Glad you joined us. We have many new options for you to select from. Okay. I just have to tell her she's on the air. Or he's on the air. And are we using our gay voices or are we using our straight voices? I believe our gay voices. One sessions with beautiful girls. No girls. Chat rooms. Teeny recorded fantasies. Or Who are you? Make a date. And now I'm one. And I'm Michael Youth. Fantasy menu. Press two. These for sizzling hot lesbians and young, beautiful, bisexual girls. Mm. Press one. Mm. These girls know their way around the female body. So let them take you. <laughs> Press one now. Didn't they say transvestites? Women who never wear panties and enjoy public places. Ew. Ew. A thing or two. <laughs> Press two now. For horny housewives and girls next door. Ew! It's pressed one. Remember, you can push the star key at any time to talk to a different fantasy girl. Mm. Please hold on a second as we connect you. 
I know you'll enjoy the call. I need the last four digits. Talk with you right now. So don't hang up. I'm not, honey. Don't She'll worry. be with you in just a few more seconds. Okay, don't worry. So lie back. Don't worry, we're gay. I guess we're going to talk to a... Uh, we're queer. Go ahead, sweetie. We're going to talk to a girl. Make yourself comfortable. Get ready for some fun oh, conversation. Your gorgeous dream girl is getting ready. Call the phone, Zach. Right mm -hmm. now. So don't hang up. A lot of you wanted the mystique behind phone sex. Just a few more. You're hearing it now. <laughs> so lie back. Everything phone sex has to offer. Uh, at Go this ahead, point, we don't want to talk about sex. We just want to talk about comfortable. Roy. Get ready for some fun conversation. At this point, let's say you're an average you're guy. And you call you. You read the back of the magazine. You call this right thing. now. Don't you lose it by now? Yep. She'll be with you. In Aren't you, Mister? Depends on whether you take one of those blue pills or not. So you still have that. a magazine in front of you. Magazine. Come on now. Where's the girl? Go hey, ahead, sweetie. Come on. Wow. Make yourself comfortable. Third time through this. Make Get yourself. ready for some fun conversation. Make yourself comfortable. Your gorgeous been, dream girl is getting ready to for talk hours. with you right now. All right, I'm going to have to go to Old Reliable Dairy Pillows. <laughs> <laughs> They won't be expecting our call. They won't, I'm sorry, they won't be expecting Alan and Michael's call. <laughs> oh, correctly. Oh, hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. 1-800-258-4. Hi, baby. That's 1-800-258. I know the number. I dialed it. Mm, I've been waiting for your call. Yeah, Hello. Are you, you ready to have your every desire fulfilled? Yeah, baby. Uh, uh, Roy. All your wildest fantasies come true. Roy. Mm, yeah, then hold on, baby. Because you're in for one hell of a ride. Yeah, baby. It's only two point nine nine per minute. Oh, but you must be 18. Sponsored by FK. Howdy, baby. Baby. Service, please call one eight hundred seven seven seven. More numbers, baby. Billing will begin three seconds after. How are you time. feeling, baby? Hi, baby. Each right, call has access to a five ninety. Wouldn't it be great if a guy came out? Each call. Your call may be monitored for quality purposes. Come on, come one on, moment, come please. on. What the hell's going on? Come on! To go one on one with a sexy girl. Only four ninety nine per minute. Right then. To join the Wait all day, baby. Or the party line, please press two. Only four four. Tedious wait, baby. Remember to get back to the main menu. You can press. Don't when in doubt, just press one. Right. This won't happen when Arnold's coming. <laughs> yeah, here we He'll go. fix it. Yeah. I just have tell her she's on the air, so everybody bear with me. Oh, that, that was a long, that was a long ring. ring. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Hello? Don and Mike, you're on the air. Not okay? Hi, how are you? Hello? Hello? What's your name? My name's Julie. Hi, Julie. My name is Alan. Alan Linewand. And I'm Michael. Michael Youth. I'm on the other extension. Is that okay? Oh, how hot is that? Yeah. Yes, it is hot. We're, we're both, uh, we're both not. Is it? No, is that what you wanted? Well, we can talk to you. You'll, you'll do. <laughs> we we don't want to. Yeah. We're a little distraught. You distraught? You know about Roy. How do you feel about Roy? Oh, uh, the guy that Tiger ate him up. Yeah. Yeah, the Tiger ate him up. Fortunately, it didn't eat him all up. He's still he's still alive. Thank God. We were wondering what what the feeling have have any other callers mentioned this to you? No. Even though you're not. Well, I guess you you wouldn't get that because you're not doing. Well, no, sometimes sometimes I do. I get people to talk about all kinds of things. Like when 9-11 happened, that's all that was going on. Can you tell we're distraught? Uh, I am. I we're distraught. There's no lead in my pencil. We, um, we just want to talk about the fact that the greatest entertainer of our generation is, uh, is hurting right now. Roy Horn. Yeah, he's... Uh, he's He's in, he's in bad shape. That's you know, he raises those white tigers from when they're kittens. I, I know, and, and what I heard, and I don't know if it's you know true or not. And you know what I loved? I love the fact that he said, don't kill the tiger. He said, send it away. Why did you have to bring that up? Because he's so brave. Alan. Because he's so Alan. brave. Michael. Michael, you listen to me. We're going to be strong now. I can't be. You can be strong, you are bitch. You upset, are you upset about him getting hurt, Alan? <laughs> Obviously not as much as Michael is. This is Alan. And I'm Michael. Right. It's We're just both terribly hurt by this. And we... Here's the dilemma. We love Roy, 
but we love the Tigers too. What would you do? I wouldn't kill the tiger. I would. I would. I agree. Observe, I would observe him and find out what happened. I'm what happened? To, what happened? I, dare I say it? What happened if Siegfried Roy could never perform again? <gasps> oh. Wouldn't you kill the tiger then? Would you kill the tiger? Would you kill the tiger? No. I wouldn't kill the tiger. We gotta find out what happened. He oh, you wouldn't kill the How it's are you okay. gonna It's okay. I know you're angry. It's How okay. Going... If she wouldn't kill the tiger, it's all right. How are you going to find out? Are you going to ask the tiger? Gonna go, excuse me, Tony. Tony the tiger. Ma'am, what is your name? Can I get your name, please? Julie. Julie Julie, you see the problem is my partner, Alan. He's so angry. He's so filled with rage. He's so completely distraught. Immediately after this incident happened, all he wanted to do was kill the beautiful tiger. Michael. They're rare. They're Michael. endangered. Michael, listen. When we go to Vegas and we stay at the Mirage, yes. how many times have we seen Siegfried and Roy? Wait, don't answer. I, I have the answer. I know the answer. 787 times. 787 shows. You guys have actually seen him perform? Yes. Yeah, of course. Awesome. It's simply the greatest show in Las Vegas. And if God... Greatest for... performance, greatest animals. If, God forbid, Roy Horn passes away. <gasps> Stop. It's not going to happen. Stop that. How long do you think it should be before Siegfried starts to see somebody else? How long should it be before Siegfried starts to date if Roy dies? Oh, no, well, I don't think... First of all, I really don't believe the man's going to die. I don't either. I'm but let's say... Bitch. Hey, now I'm sorry. To bite your thing. tongue. That is just, that's just a, what a horrible thing to say. Do you, do you have any sensitivity after seeing that many shows for the show, for Siegfried, for the Tigers? You know one thing I've never noticed? What? A ring. Oh. I've never noticed a ring. Really? And, uh, and he has a problem with that because we both wear rings. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't laugh at us. But, I was out coughing. And I just happen to be just as concerned about animals as I am for people. And I always have been, which is more than I can say for I'm, Alan Linewand. I'm not, which is why I'm wearing this lovely, beautiful, full fur coat today. That's, that's nice. And I have 11 <laughs> rings on right now. And, Missy, you can do the math on that. <laughs> I've got 11 rings on. You know where he's wearing one of the other rings? The second one. What? Oh, never mind. I asked which one has. I thought you had them on every finger. Do you like? I do have them on every finger and somewhere, somewhere else. You cheap whore. Okay. Stop being mean to her. He is so filled with rage, he's just beside himself. I want to speak to you, Julie. Can I say something to you? Yeah, because I want to explain my Julie? Tiger. Julie. Julie. Do you like soft, cuddly, newborn white tigers? Yes. So do I. Period. So do I. And I think that's what we ought to think about a little bit now. And the problem with them is it's the same thing as with musicians, that they grow up, and I'm talking about you, Michael. Oh, thank you so and the much. Band, you know, the, the band that you're in, the George Siegel, uh, uh, the, 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 the barbershop quartet band you're in. Please. All right, you want to share something with me? You want to get it out in the open right here while we have Julie on the phone? I want to say... In the beginning, everybody's young and nobody thinks anything bad's going to happen. That little tiger will grow up to be a big, man-eating tiger, just like my little banjo player, it's my little Silva. drummer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't you've matter. Turned, you've turned out to be a man-eater, too. I, I still love the smell of the small paws. There's nothing wrong with that. And you know something? Your anger about this whole situation is spilling over to me. And I'd like to... I, Julia, I think you're probably sensing that. Are you sensing that? And what, what can we do about that? Alan Limewan is so completely angry with me, and I just don't know how to deal, deal with him. You know what I'm thinking about? <laughs> Julie, I want to tell you something. Is that Michael now talking? Yes, Michael Hughes. This is Alan Limewan. And I'm you, Michael Hughes. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm thinking? What? <laughs> I'm thinking. You know one of those. I'm not, but I know one of those. No one of what? No one of what? Did you say a line psychic? A line psychic? A line, a line psychic. psychic? What no. did you say? Why don't you just listen, Missy, as opposed to talking? A line wand? That's my name, honey, line wand. His name is Alan Line Wand. My name is Michael Hughes. We're gay. We're upset about Siegfried and Roy. I We're calling. There's no line to call except that what we thought was our all-male gay sex line. The only not. difference between the two of us is that I care more about the Tigers. Listen, can I, can I say something? Yes, what? To both of you. What? I'm, I'm trying. I want. I want to place my stand on the issue with the tiger. Number one. Place my hand wherever you want, darling. <laughs> hey, just remember, you can't spell huge without Hughes. Oh, that's true. You're 
You're absolutely right. I agree with you. Thank you. Where do you want my Where do you want my hand to go? Where would you? Well, let me say, you can't spell homeless without homo. <laughs> what does that mean? That means what is that? How is that germane to this discussion? Whose name is on the lease of our loft? That would be my name, Line One. Go ahead, then. Is that what you're trying to say? Is that what you're trying to say? You're going to kick me out? You're the one that brought vagina into this you're, conversation. You're going to throw me out on the street. Well, Julie seems if like a nice, be, responsible person that we're talking to. If you'd, you'd rather to. be with a woman, if you'd rather be with a woman than be with me... Don't be silly. Listen, guys. Don't be absolutely ridiculous. Okay. I, and I, darling, I'm sorry. It's the Joe. That's right. It's the Roy Horn. Roy Horn. Joe Horn plays for the face. It's the Roy Horn coming out at me. That's right. He's oozing out of every pore of my body. God, I feel for that man. Julie, can you? Why are you guys fighting? Because of the tiger being alive? Is that the issue? No, no, we're, no, fighting, we're fighting because, because we're, upset. we're upset about Roy Horn. You could be a little more sensitive, Julie. Are you in Las Vegas? No. Where are you at? North Florida. North Dakota. Florida. 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 You could be a little more sensitive, couldn't you, Julie? About what? About Roy Horn. I am. I, what I said to you. I want you to say right now that you feel bad for Roy Horn. I do feel bad for the man. Well, well, why don't you start showing it, Missy? Is it because we're gay? Is that why you're treating us this way? Are you ostracizing us? Is that what you're doing? What? You're ostracizing us. We have more in common than you know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, did, I, don't, ha I don't have an issue. No, in, you do. In some ways, this is three ladies on the telephone talking, and we all know it. Know that. And I'm questioning the sensitivity of one of the ladies. Do you care about the tigers? I care about the tiger, and I care... Do you care about the tigers, or do you care about horn? Answer that question. I care about both of them. No, Good. you must... That's the right answer. No. You can't accept that answer, but that's no. the answer you should accept. You must select which. No, I don't have to select. C word. <gasps> I oh, my God. You C called word. me that. C word, and I mean it. Julie, did you hear what he just called me? What did he call you? He called me the C word. You know what that word is, don't you? No. Sure she does. It's in the back of her underpants. <gasps> oh! <laughs> now... Yeah. No, now you're being mean to her. It's tattooed on her it's belly button. Underpants. <laughs> it would be in the front of my underpants, but in your case, it's in the back of your underpants. Oh, that's wonderful. What did you just say to me? She made a joke about what we do. I didn't. You know, did she really? Your lack of no, sensitivity said, makes me you know, sick to my you stomach. Is that you cheap you, little you, whore? You tart. I, and you're making me. You trowel up. Me to be, and that's the way that I really. No, you just. No, you're, you're an you're evil. You're a heartless, evil person. You're a whore, and and regardless how you feel about the tigers or about about dear Roy, how dare you assassinate the character of Alan Linewand or Michael Hughes? We won't sit here and take this from you, Missy. You 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 attacked my character. We didn't attack anyone. You did too. You, you did. attacked us just like a white tiger. You said, of course I know what that word is because it's written on the back of my underpants. Yes, and it was a horribly insensitive remark. Okay. And I took total offense at it. I attack back. Is there an issue with that? You're We're not attacking back. Yes, you are. We are not. Yes, you are. You're no. of being a, a non-sensitive No, 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 no. You're no, the C-word. No. You're the C-word times one million. You're C-word infinity. Infinity, do you hear me? I'm very disgusted with this. I'm upset about Roy Horn. I need to speak to a supervisor. No. <laughs> where's where's, the, where's the, the, the lady that runs your brothel? <laughs> oh, that's a witchy poo laugh. I, I, Where'd you learn that laugh, Missy? On the back of a broom? <laughs> Super. No, I don't have a broom. Hey, bitch, are you listening to me right now? Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind to go one on one with a sexy. I don't have the strength to do it again. I don't either. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> that, was, that went well. I'm exhausted. That was grand. I have a headache and I need to take a, grand, a long bath. <laughs> grand, grand fun. Wow. Had that on the list for yesterday. Had to call. Give some support to the Horn Man. Very good. Excellent the job. The man of Horn City. Uh, hey, listen. This music means one thing. It means Rob has written some gags. And we're going to play Magic Game 2003. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you right now, I know who's on the panel. It's uh, me, of course, and Mike. Because it's our show. And Buzz, because it's his birthday. Right. And joining us today is our celebrity uh, panelist. Yes, Joe. Joe Arden's Oh, game. the wild card. Jill's not just a name, it's an idea. So you want to play a uh, match game, winner gets $100.
That's your plan for. Wow. And we need, Rob, you always walk me through this. Yes, we'll need uh, two players and then two players again. So we need a total of four, four callers at 877-365-3636. And now, yes. I'll tell you why Rob is so excited about doing this bit. <laughs> Not because it's a bit that we think is funny. I think I know. That we enjoy playing. It is, though. Rob has many obsessions. Mm -hmm. This is one I don't think you know about. I think you know about his obsession with everything German. Get ready for some outstanding audio quality. His uh, his obsession with everything that has to do with beer or yeah. Elvis Presley. Right. I don't think you know Rob's fascination with the big, long, skinny microphone that Gene Rayburn used on the match game. Put the that on the shrink's couch. The ECM-51, Don. And through the magic of eBay, Rob was able to get one. Now, talk let's, into it. Let's see what it sounds. Where does it come up on my board? It come up on mic five. On number five? Gotcha. Turn Hello, on. stars. This is the way that sounds. Hi, Rob. How are you, stars? He's on the yeah. telephone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll work it through. I don't know. I've not used it yet on air. I think it sounds good. <laughs> I think it sounds like a great you microphone. Only, you know, I hope the Red Sox play well for you. <laughs> you only want to use it because you actually want the visual prop of using the same microphone. Exactly. And it took me over three years to find it. <laughs> It in no way benefits our radio audience. Let him I, think, do I it. think you should do it. Let him do it. You don't know what a quest this has been. It took been. a long time. You don't know what a quest. I've been around Rob. I've been with Rob when he's gone to the computer right. to compulsively check on oh, eBay <laughs> to see who has what. Right. I'm so goddamn jealous. That he wanted this microphone so badly. It looks great. Doesn't it, though? You're not. No, I don't think you're holding it the right way. Oh, I beg to differ. Are you holding it like Rayburn did? Exactly how he, he would hold it. He, he would want know. some on the staff and then a curve of, of cable yep. over the hand. He would know. Now, let's say that, hey, that, I, that. that, I, that I'm uh, in the front row. Interview me with it, as Gene Rayburn would. Hello, stars. How are you, ladies and gentlemen? You know, it's always nice to have him down in the bottom left. Don Geronimo. Don, good to see you. Hey there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're pointing something big and gigantic in my face, Rob. Always great to see you. Always great to be here in television city. Go talk to Mike. All right. Someone's a little excited about the way the game came out last night. Hi, Mike. How are you, Rob? Doing really well. Thanks so much. Do you like my microphone? Yeah, I do. It's an extension of your body. Thank you so much. <laughs> play the game. Oh, wow. So you got to get that metal picture in your mind. Rob's Rob. playing with like a long 12-inch microphone. Listen, this is just for people back in the day, back our age, people right. who watch the match game. And mm -hmm. you know that Gene Rayburn had that gigantic... And Bob Barker has something like it, doesn't he? Bob's is actually built custom by the guy at CBS. I called and asked. Sure. It's a Neumann microphone head. Oh, really? Is yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good, that's so a good head. Even with, even with Rob's fascination with this microphone, we are going to play match game. Very good. Uh, you can win $100. 877-365-3636. It is funny to see him with that microphone. Rob, go ahead. go ahead. Take us a break, Rob. Go ahead. Everybody stay tuned for Match Game 2003 on the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. WJFK. Medical emergency on the inner loop at 66 is out of your way. Heavy traffic northbound 95. Get into the Beltway. Accident in Springfield. Three right lanes will get you by before 644. Traffic's brought to you by North Carolina's Crystal Coast. Southern Outer Banks come further south this year to clear skies, warmer waters. Try a new vacation destination, North Carolina's Crystal Coast. 1-800-SUNNY-NC today for more information. Happy birthday, Buzz. Beer abruptly, Donna Mike Show, WJFK. I love to root, root, root for the home team. I hear that, dog. Uh-oh. And it's nice to note that Singular Wireless is rooting for you. With Singular on your side, does that sound as bad as I think it sounds? Yeah, try mic number three. I'm glad when they were in here fixing the other problem that there was no problem with the microphone. Mike? With Singular on your side, you'll win with Singular's great calling plans. If you need to keep your team connected, get family talk with Nationwide Long Distance. It's fantastic, and you can add a line to your calling plan for nine ninety nine per line per month. Plans start at just thirty nine ninety nine. Share your minutes, and you only have to keep up with one bill. So why don't you call Singular at one eight six six singular Log on to Singular.com. Go to any Singular wireless store in the area. They have dozens of them. They yeah. do, they, you tell them Don and Mike sent you. Certain restrictions apply. See any singular wireless store for details. Now back to the Don and Mike show. Already in progress. What a set. WJFK. Hey, who are we? The Don and Mike show. This 
is the Don and Mike Show. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the first spin of the second showcase showdown on The Price is Right, the highest rated game show in daytime television. The Don and Mike Show. Because it is my show and I'll say what I wish. It's the Don and Mike Show and they'll say what they wish. Yeah. And just for once, don't blame this one on me. I love this song, but guess who else does? Selected by... Uh, now, our buzzer, are you speaking? Uh, uh, yeah, I am now. There you go. I got it. I say bravo to you, sir. Thanks. Bravo to Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Hold on. we got to play another bumper. This whole thing was... I thought it was fine. Wow. I thought it was fine. You know, here's, here's the thing. There was a problem with... Mike is on mic three. Hello? There was a problem with... So, with getting the traffic lady on the air, yes. something that doesn't concern the network, just mm-hmm. locally here. And they came in during the during the commercial break. Wendell came in and was working on the stuff. And we, we came back from the break, and none of the CD, all the CDs had reset. No. Mike's microphone doesn't work. Try number two. Uh, check one, two, one, two. That's still not right. No, it's not right. Yeah. So Mike's on microphone number three. I'll be on this one now. I'm over here now. Sounds Joe, good. try number. Oh, Joe, Joe, try number four. Can you hear me now? There, I got Joe on number four. And Rob, you're on number five, right? You're on number five. Then we're set. Everybody's let me, here. Let me just take this out of the, the break because it's, it's Buzz's birthday, and he, he picked the song. So hold on just a second. It's on in my show. Give me a fresh bumper here, Buzz. Time to polish the peanut. Time for Don and Mike. There you go. Yeah. And uh, we're all here. Rob's got his uh, microphone. Lisa took your picture. That'll be on WJFK.com. Correct, Robbie? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Rob, as you can tell, Rob is using a special microphone that looks just like the one that they used on Match Game. Now let's, let's play the game. Oh, here's Dude Walker. Get ready to match the stars. Yay. It's Match Game 2003. Yay. Yay. With the stars, Don Geronimo. Hi, everybody. Mike O'Mara. Working great, beep. Michael J. Elston. Hi, gang. And your host, Rob Spiewak. Hello, stars. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Rob, Rob on your Rob. match game microphone. So good to see all of you here in Television City. Let's say hi to our stars before we meet our contestants. <laughs> He's currently touring the United States promoting his full-color coffee table book, Tiger Pride. Say hello to Don Geronimo. Hello, Don. Hi, Rob. And, of course, Tiger Pride means a lot with Roy Horn these days. It does, and we all... So I, my, the charity I'm playing for today... Yes. <laughs> Save Roy. I didn't know we were doing a charity edition today. No, nor did I. Sorry, Rob. Very, very good. And What's oh, wrong with your microphone, Rob? Not a thing. <laughs> uh, you loved him last season on ABC Television's The Bachelor. Someday I hope you'll give me a rose. Mr. Mike O'Mara. Mike. Hello, Rob. How are you? You're looking well? I don't feel well, Rob. <laughs> really? Yes. Liver damage, Rob. Well, I think you look great. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're not bad yourself. <laughs> You've seen him on CNN all this week as an expert commentator for the Rush Limbaugh Pilgrim controversy. He's not your friendly neighborhood druggist. He's Joe Ardinger. Hi, Joe. Joe. Hi, Rob. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. I followed your advice about crushing it and put it behind your molar. Right. That's really great. Cool. And, of course, the birthday boy, the anchor of our panel, and the star of the CBS special, <laughs> Buzz Burbank, 50 years of news and laughter. Be sure to check your local listings. It's Michael J. Elston. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Rob. <laughs> How you doing? I'm just, good. You know, and we're up against the clock here, so I just want to mention before you start the game, uh-huh. if you're just getting in your car and you're thinking, Rob, Rob's mic sounds effed up. Uh-huh. <laughs> Rob yeah. paid an ungodly amount of money <laughs> to go on eBay and buy the exact same microphone that Gene Rayburn used on the match game. Really? Back in the day when uh, McLean Stevenson and and Brett Klugman were on the show. Yeah, and it's the same one you would see in 70s television, it, and that's exactly what it's it, all it's about. It's been a quest for Rob to get it, mm-hmm. and, and, and now it, it's a, a dream being fulfilled, he's using it while we play match games. And thank just, you for being a part of my dream. And it just happens to look a lot better than it sounds. That's yes. all. I mean, on TV in the in the 70s, it was fantastic. Rob, let me introduce you to our two uh, contestants, and then we'll get this uh, <laughs> thing going. Here uh, from Baltimore, listening on Live 105, is Brian. Hi, Brian. Hey, how you doing, Don? Happy Ooh. birthday, Buzz. Thank you. And uh, joining us uh, from Reno, from the Buzz, here is Doug. Hi, Doug. How you doing, Don? Hi, hey, Buzz. Happy birthday. Hey, We're doing great. Robbie, let's get right to the game. All right, Brian and Doug, I know you have uh, reviewed the rules. You're familiar with how to play Match Game with 2003, aren't you? Oh, you bet. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Microphone sounds so bad. <laughs> it's horrible. 
You know what? But keep in mind, many of the people are hearing this on AM. So <laughs> yeah. there you go. We I think it even sucks on AM. Yeah, Rob. they can't tell the difference. We <laughs> flipped a coin backstage. Brian, you won. So I need you to pick A or B. Brian just hung up. All right. Well then, Doug. Hold on. Let's go to Todd. Todd. Todd, Todd where are you from, Todd? Manteca, California. All right. Beautiful. On KHTK, right? Right. Did you vote? Did you vote? Yes, I did. For? Larry Flint. Can you hear me? He voted for Larry Flint. He voted for Larry Flint. There we can. No. Mm. Yeah, there you go. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy, isn't it? I'm doing my best over here. I know. You, I yeah. know you do. I did a lot to deal with. Todd, are you familiar with the rules of match game? Yes. Very good. I need you to pick A or B, Todd. B. Hey. 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 And here is your clue. Please do not answer until we ask you to. Our thoughts are still with famed game magician Roy Horn as he recovers from a tiger attack in Las Vegas. Did you say famed game magician? I did say famed game magician. I don't know where you're getting that from. <laughs> He's not a magician. Oh, my. I read it in the paper. Oh, my. But at least experts have determined what caused Montecor, that's the name of the big white cat, yeah. what caused Montecor to attack. Before the performance, Herr Horn forgot to blank the tiger. <laughs> all right. I'm in. You've been following all this... Uh... Siegfried and Roy stuff, Todd? Yes, I have. Very good. And uh, our thoughts are still with famed game magician Roy Horn. As he recovers from a tiger attack in Las Vegas, at least experts have determined what caused Montecor to attack. Before the performance, Hair Horn forgot to blank the tiger. I'm in. I'm in. Don is in. Buzz is in. Yeah. Mike, are you in? I'm in. You're I'm in. Everybody's Joe? ready. Very good. Todd, they forgot to blank Montecor. What did they forget to do? They forgot to spank him. They forgot to spank the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That might actually make him mad. Don, do you have spanked the tiger? No, I said they forgot to blow the tiger. <laughs> and that would make him annoyed. Mike? Ah, uh, this is always good. I love tiger's milk. If they forgot to milk the tiger. <laughs> Milking the tiger. It's a great way to spend an afternoon. Joe? They forgot to F the tiger. F the tiger. <laughs> there you go. Right into the gutter. How about you, Buzz? I said they forgot to BJ the tiger. BJ, not commonly a verb, but no match there. So, Todd, you don't have any points on the board, and we go to Doug. Doug that microphone sounds so bad. I know you love playing the game with the microphone. Do you hear the... You have headphones on. Do you yeah. hear the... Qual it sounds like a telephone. It, it, it sounds... It's, that's exactly what it sounds like. Rob thinks he's on TV right now. He's obliv oblivious. All right. I, well said, Joe. Let me give you the, an insight into, into the world of Rob. Okay. Yes? I'm, I'm gauging from you. How important it is for him to continue. That's why I'm not saying I know it is. Because it's extremely it, important yes. for him to have this toy. I know. It's not the only one that he has. No, right. no, it's not. But this is the one that's closest to the one on TV. It's this, the most expensive one. This right? is this is the uh, holy grail of my microphone. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it needs a tuning up. <laughs> this, this, this instrument that Rob is talking into now has caused some strife. In his life. Oh, really? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There is, and, and I know this because, you know, well, when they have the convention, you know, when the the wives, my wife is, right. is good friends with Rob's wife, yeah. and I hear things third hand, as I'm sure you do, Rob, but yeah. I'll hear, I'll be talking with Frida, do you believe how much Rob paid for that microphone on eBay? Exactly. And I say, well, hey, I, it's what he's into. Yeah. Right. He's been looking, the whole time the I've known him, item. Mm -hmm. the whole time I've known him, he's wanted it. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and then your wife complains to my wife, and then my wife tells your, your wife what a schmuck I am, how I buy, like, Packers stuff, and they sit around. They were doing this in my house on Sunday while I was watching football. So, so to use this during the performing of the of the job <laughs> is essential for him. Is yeah. that what you're saying to me? He must have it. I, I completely and understand that. As a further insight into Rob's Whack, because I do consider myself one of his best friends. Yes. His favorite episode of Seinfeld, at least in the top three, is the one where Kramer found the old set for the Merv Griffin show. Right, and, and did his own talk show. Mm -hmm. Because, again, if Rob could find the set... Right, of Match Game, we'd all be oh having God. to do a radio show with the set. Everyone could come to my house. It would be great. <laughs> I swear to Christ, you'd do it. You really True. would, right? In a second. Well, with the expense and all that, I understand that. You've you got to keep it. But on, 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 another, on the other side of this, I must tell you, he, 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 seek help. <laughs> okay, you, great. You need some help. You really got it. <laughs> All right. Bob, this really sounds bad. That bad, really? Well, you, hold, you know, let me see if my wife's on her way to her. Uh, Maybe it's my mic technique. I'm wondering whether Rayburn held it further away. What does it sound like if you... Like further away like this? That's better. Right. Is it really? Yes, it is. Oh, it's been forwarded. It could be because it's a condenser message. mic, so... Not really. Well, she's not. There. You know, maybe I get feedback from another caller. Closer to your hold chest, on. Both of you guys hold on a second. Then you'll just hear the pitter pat of my Hello. heart. Hello. Don and my show. Uh, yeah, I want to be a contestant. No, 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 we're not getting contestants right now. I hope you're actually listening to the show. Hi, Don and Mike. 
Hello. Hi, this is Brian. Brian, are you, are, you, are you listening to the show today? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Have you heard Rob talking to his Match Game microphone? Yes. How do you think it sounds? I like crap. I like crap. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right, thank you. I'm just trying to get Can it be here. fixed. Uh, Don and Mike, hello. Has Mike yeah. fought that? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Have you heard Rob's Match Game microphone? I do. It doesn't sound that bad. It just sounds like there's a little extra reverb to it. Hmm. That's extra reverb. Yeah, yeah, all right. Everybody's got Obviously. input on this. Hello, Don and Mike. Obviously an audio file. Oh. Hello. <laughs> hold, hold on a second. This is probably my wife calling me back. Hello? Sure, Bear. Sweetie. I don't, think, I don't think it sounds that bad. Yes. Well, there you I, go. <laughs> I think it sounds fine. It sounds uh, a little tinnier, but in a way, in its own way, a crisper. It's like a different voice. So it's fine. Just the same way you'd have somebody on the show... Uh, who doesn't have the perfect deep kind of buzz? Rob is ringer. actually Rob, dancing right Rob now. Rob is dancing because what this is, you you made it very happy. it's an endorsement mm -hmm. from you, which I know you can take home and translate into an endorsement to your wife. Read a source for the it, Sony ECM 51. It's, it's different, and it's not as nice. It's not as uh, net. I mean, yours, you don't even think about whether you're using a microphone, but it's not annoying. That's the most important thing. It's ah, not it's annoying. Not it's annoying. It's not annoying. It's a plot. That actually then, could be a slug we could use for the show. Then let me ask, <laughs> let me ask you something. Not Will you in any way turn these positive comments into a conversation with Carrie? When you're talking with, with Rob's wife, at any point will you say, Hey, listen, I know you and I have talked about this thing with Rob and his fascination. I say I give I give positive comments to Carrie all the time. I say, I know Rob's a giant dummy, but he's got a good heart. And uh, you got to lower your expectations. So That's I'm phone always phone supportive ever. of Rob. What did I, Rob, what did I tell you? This, I swear to God. I this told, is very cool. This I, was the best phone call ever. That's I good. told Rob, the, the Carrie and Julia, who were over at our house on Sunday. Right. Uh, and I called Rob up and I said, "Well, they're having the meeting upstairs." Mm -hmm. And I and I and I walked by because Frida was upstairs with Carrie up up in the computer room doing whatever they were doing. And later I I said to Frida, "What did you talk about?" And she said, "Nothing." And she the example, Carrie's saying, well, Rob doesn't do this and Rob doesn't do this. And I hear Frida saying, well, why do you expect him to? Has he ever shown you that? Now, I'll say on the other hand, she did say exactly what you just heard. She said, she thought about me. He's a wonderful guy with a good heart, but I can't trust him to do anything. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And she gave the same advice to your wife. Which which is awful. No, which it's is, good though. It's good. So, uh, is the gist of this that the microphone was a, a frivolous purchase? Is that what this is all about? I, I don't think that Rob's. Carrie wife... Carrie didn't like the microphone. And Rob's it's something Rob wanted. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Carrie has perhaps issues with the microphone. I don't think she's jealous of the microphone. No, I think I think you know when any young couple with little kids is on a on a budget as everybody is. See, right there, that's yeah. where I know Frida's gone into her spin when I hear on a budget. The kids have to eat. Yeah. On a budget. <laughs> yes. There, Julia loves you know, the microphone. There's not too, always though. total agreement on the purchases, but that. But I, I, I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't even, even in spite of that, in spite of the fact that they are the parents of our godchild, who I would like to grow up in a happy home. I wouldn't tell you to keep it on the radio if it were annoying, and it's not. All right, thanks, honey. This is You're such welcome. a great phone call. Thanks, bye bye. Thank you. You liked it at the beginning. I still like it. <laughs> you like it? No, he likes it legitimately. Yeah. yeah. Bye bye, honey. All right. I love you. So, Carrie is jealous of the microphone? No, I never said that. She oh. perhaps thinks that the money, which was quite a bit, could have gone better elsewhere. Mm. So she comes to my house, like, for the support group. <laughs> Rob believes that everybody is jealous of this microphone. <laughs> that, that is the funniest part. Even during the break. Even during the break, he, made, he was making comments about me being jealous you of the money. You fondled it. And I said, you, you are correct. It. I pretended like it was something special, for Christ's sake. It's special. It is. And he's holding it like Gene Rayburn. So they're both at the house, and my wife's giving Carrie the primer on, like, okay, basically what she's saying is, yeah, your husband's a dick, but there are some good things about him, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why not just let him be the way that he is? Because you're never going to change him. And we are so superior, and we are so advanced. And, and then I heard uh, about the, I heard the the microphone. Mm. I heard Carrie bring up the microphone. But what's good here is we've got that Carrie should lower her expectations, and the microphone doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> that's uh, that's what I got out of the call. Let me win. see. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> both of these guys. Who, who do we have? Todd. Todd didn't match anybody in round one. Okay, and we still need to do Doug's clue. 
We got a break first, Robbie. Oh. Oh. Because we've had this controversy with a microphone. <laughs> Is there um, an outside shot that Wendell could fix my microphone during the break? That's going to be something we're shooting for, Mike. Excellent. You'll oh. need a blank. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What's happened to me? Clue. <laughs> clue, that's right. You'll need a clue. You'll need a clue. Need a clue. Bingo, right. baby. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Call, I know. It's match game. Stand by. It's like honk for match. <laughs> <laughs> and I like this bit. Even, I love this bit, Robbie. <laughs> honk for microphone. <laughs> Your microphone's killing us here. <laughs> but I guess Frida said it sounds okay. Listener said... She said it sounded crisper. <laughs> Fight on. Fight on, fight on. Jealous? <laughs> jealous. Yeah. Oh, insanely. <laughs> Out of my mind, jealous. Um, we'll continue playing with these guys, and I think we need somebody else, like like it matters. Rob, take us to break. Go ahead with your with your very expensive eBay microphone. We'll be right back with Match Game 2003 on the Don and Mike Show. Thank you, stars. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Me? That's why the bosses sent me out here. They wanted me to make sure none of the other crews robbed the joint. Like these two f***ing balloon heads over here. They were going to try to bang us out of 200 f***ing grand? Yeah, right, I'm sure. The Don and Mike Show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Right, right. This is ghetto delicious. Rich with the good taste of hypocrisy. The Don and Mike Show. I saw werewolf. I got good news and bad news. Oh, yeah, music uh, courtesy of Buzz that exists. Yeah. Yeah. Birthday. Um, All right, good choice there. I love that one, Buzz. Uh, the deal is... Um, we do a uh, match game now. We will not get the show done in time. We will get. We will not get news. We'll be in very big trouble. So, Rob, yes. <laughs> the good news is, I have rescheduled tomorrow. Okay. We will play match game tomorrow. That's good news, and I think we all know why we had to reschedule. Why do we have why? to reschedule? Because everyone is jealous of my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so put are. it away. Put it away now. Okay, watch. You see a telescope. It goes from nineteen. Ten inches. Hey, how about that? that? Nice? How about that? Yeah, do I, it the I, other way. Make it go from ten to nineteen. Hey, go. Don't, don't we all wish we could do that? Now I am jealous. Now move it back down again. <laughs> now up again. Down. You just want me to break it. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't. I can break it if you want. I'm fascinated you, by the sound. Would you? <laughs> it's all he's lived for for the last year. I'm right. teasing him. It hurts. I'm Your sorry, words Rob. hurt me. I'm sorry. I know that's important to you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rob. Tomorrow, get a little nail polish. Turn it off, off now, Rob. Get the paint off. Say goodbye with it. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> goodbye. Stay tuned for Gambit on most of these okay. CBS. <laughs> Shut up. There you go. You want to read something? Read this. Read the new phone number for the Westwood One Matrix Contest. You can win a trip to the premiere of Matrix Revolutions in Los Angeles. Just call 1-888-635-0643. That's 1-888-635-0643. Or go to WJFK.com to find out how you can win a trip to the premiere of Matrix Revolutions in Los Angeles. Now, now dogs will call. Now, really, and you can continue to speak in the microphone on this for a second. <laughs> yes. I understand the deal with, because I'm this way about some stuff, football, Batman. Uh, you know, you see stuff, you like it, you want to have collectibles. When I get, like, a, a jersey or something or a ball, it's got to be... Game used, game worn. I gotta have an authentic, the real deal. So I'm with you. You guys share that. That's one of the many things you have in common. You you guys dig collectibles. Um, However, you know, I'll use myself as an example. If I got a football, and I do have a football that was used in a Packer game mm -hmm. and signed by Vince Lombardi and other guys, I don't take it out and throw it. I don't. I don't use it. I, I just mm -hmm. it's up there on my wall. But wouldn't you play catch with Vince Lombardi if you could? I think the thrill of this collectible <laughs> is the fact that he was able to take it to his job and, and use it. I mean, that's yeah. got to be, if I'm wrong, but that's got to be the best thrill. It's the match game microphone. But it sounds right. like crap, for the match game. Yes, but the microphone sounds like crap. He doesn't care about that. The fact is that he used it at his job. He's disappointed that it sounds like crap. I am disappointed, but it actually, to me, sounds quite good. <laughs> <laughs> what has your wife said to you? And throughout the process... I'm to go back and watch the Game Show Network and watch those old match games and see if Gene Rayburn sounded that bad. No, it didn't, but it looks exactly the yeah. same. It's exactly right. It's the right. CM-51. <laughs> Tell us about the process with your wife to to sell your wife on the thought 
that you were going to have this quest to get this microphone. Well, she didn't think I would ever find it, I think, because I really did start back in the last millennium looking for it. It took a long time to figure out the model number, and then once I found it... Well, you, you, it just, you watched the match game, you saw him with this... Uh, Long microphone, and you started searching for it. Is that Michael was the one who actually found the model number? He's been along on the quest as well. The oh, say. okay. You've missed, you've missed the times in the office that Rob would be up there with a with a manual, right? Mm -hmm. And he'd look at the picture and he'd go, "Someday, <laughs> it this, will be this, mine. This is the baby I want." We like uh, like Mike Myers with his guitar in Wayne's World. Right? We got very right. close two months ago with a Marantz telescoping mic, but it just wasn't quite right. Mm -hmm. Whatever it sounded better. Oh, it did. It sounded really? great. I got an audio expert here to tell us how this, this microphone sounds. Hello, how does it sound? Hello, Hello guys. How does how does Rob's <laughs> microphone you got me? You got me. How you so got me out of how, how does Rob's uh, match game microphone sound? Good. Sounds good. Hey guys. Hi Tom. Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Hey Don. Hey Hi. Tom. How are you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Happy birthday, dear Buzz. Happy birthday to you. Oh, hey, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Tom, where are we going tomorrow night, buddy? We're going to Crystal City Restaurant. Titty Bar. Titty Bar. Titty Bar. You excited, Tom? Yep. We'll you going to you have a good time? Yep. We'll be there at 8 o'clock, Tom. What time is the uh, car picking me up? You have to work that out with Charlie. But we have a we have a place where I'm going to be meeting you, and you're going to get in my car. Yeah. Everybody's invited to come join uh, me and Mike and the, and the whole crew. We're right. going to be at at the Titty Bar, Crystal City Underground tomorrow night. I have to spend an hour. It's, it's, all, it's on 23rd Street in Arlington. It's right next to the 7-Eleven. There's going to be a great crowd there. Mm -hmm. Now if, we can say the word Titty Bar. Yes. Am, are they going to delete it if I ask Tom to spell it? I don't know. Let's try Tom. Spell. You can only find out by Sorry. spell Titty Bar. T T I T I T S B A R. <laughs> I'm afraid that I can't read that. <laughs> oh, I Teets that, Bar. I hope that got through. Yeah. All right, Tom. See you tomorrow. What? Hey, who's picking me up tomorrow? Well, you got to work that out with him. Tom. I'll put you on hold. Hello, Tom. Charlie. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Charlie. Bye, uh, bye, Tom. I was going to have Tom spell exotic. <laughs> wow, not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. You think? <laughs> well, and, and besides, Charlie's deep in the conversation with him right now. He huh? loves him. Mm -hmm. All right, thank like you. Like the brother Ryan. he never had. Put it away, please. Goodbye, everybody. Until tomorrow, then. <laughs> Goodbye. There it goes. Same time, same station. There it goes. Wow. Microphone. He's got a little case for it and everything. <laughs> he's got. A, it's a towel that he's got. It's, like, well, it's got like a face cloth. It's, you know, it's, see, the weird thing is, is because of its age, the foam rubber in the case it, had dissolved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want my ECM 51 clanking around in the metal box. That's fascinating. Not Crazy. good for it. That's nice. He's nuts. That's very nice. He's nuts. You had to be there with him every step. Where he, we, we, when he actually found it, when he would mm -hmm. say to me. I'm so close. Mm -hmm. I'm so, and he'd go on the computer. I'm, I was in there when he was talking about it. Yeah. And he was always crazy about he'd, it. He'd go, oh, bastard. Someone had outbid him on eBay for it. He was crazy for that cookie microphone. Another, you know, no <laughs> hanky-panky. No hanky-panky. Terminate. Move forward with me or backward with Cray Davis. <laughs> okay, hold on just a second. Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey. Hey. I know why Rob's wife doesn't like the microphone. Why? Because he won't share it with her. He's got this thing that's long and it extends. She probably wants just a little time with it. Rob, do you have anything to say to that? No. Robbie, are you? No, he, he won't. Yeah. He won't dignify that with an answer. <laughs> you know, we, when he had his long microphone, he we couldn't tear him away, but could not I, shut him up. Things is dignified with a great pass. Shut up, like the match game, and take it to that level. I think that's sad. Uh -huh. Okay. You Look within friend. yourself, sir. Last okay. Bye, bye, sir. Bye. Bye, bye. See you later. Which means we have at least a, a break and a half of open time here. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have a lot of time. We want to get to Buzz's news and comment. Um, I'll give you a variety of, of choices and things. Okay. Well, you know what? First off, you could do right here if you wanted to. I mean, what the hell? You want to sing your Boston Red Sox song? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, because it's the day after, and sure. I might not have a you chance to a sing it. Yeah. Oh, no, I can't. Actually. You can't? Because Never mind. Because you know, we, none of the machines, machines work in number two. Mm -hmm. Hello? Test, 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 test. Got nothing. Got check. Got, got nothing. Got, 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 got no time. Got nothing. Got check. Got, got. What are we? It's like we're here. What's going on today? The cafe. Welcome to the Don of My Cafe. What are you serving up today, Don? Today, Mike, we're going to be doing side okay, two. Okay, I'll be here. Oops. 
That's the traffic lady. <laughs> Today we're going to be doing side two <laughs> of Led Zeppelin. Four, 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 four. Oh, ladies, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, children, children of all ages, ladies. now singing yeah, yeah, yeah. for his victorious Boston Red Sox. Just one day before we go to the Tippy Bar. Mike. Your shoes off, put your feet up. It's time to meet up with the Boston Red Sox. Boston more than Boston Red Sox. Relax, 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 and be a Sox. Oh, watch out. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say on behalf of myself, and all the Red Sox Nation. Thank you very much. We will, uh, I will not personally be using the term cowboy up. I'm not fond of it, I'm sorry, but I... Cowboy up! I certainly love the team, and they're a great bunch of guys, and good luck as we take on the evil empire. Okay, so you had your moment to sing your song. I did. And tomorrow you'll be able to gloat when I'm at the titty bar with you, and the game's on at the same time? Yes, I'm not going to gloat too much, though, because, uh, you know, there could be painful moments. Ahead. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, Don and Mike. Hey. Hey, did you see your Letterman last night? Uh, negative here. Anybody else no, see Letterman? I haven't watched it yet. Uh, they had the uh, O'Reilly phrase of the day. <laughs> oh, he, oh, Has he switched uh, from Dr. Phil to O'Reilly? Yep. Excellent. Yep, right after, right after the uh, Bush moment. And technically he has stolen from us then. But that was us stealing from him because we did the O'Reilly well, how does, thing. How does that work? Here's the thing. He did the Dr. Phil moment, uh -huh. and then we did the Bill O'Reilly moment. And now he realizes that the Bill O'Reilly moment it's might funny. even be funnier than the Dr. <laughs> Phil moment. So technically, right. he's stolen on our improvement of his idea. He's yeah. like, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Mike, this is Bob. I am originally from Boston, and I was home last night in town, and uh, things are very, very nutty, but we're going to win. You know that. I feel good. Well, it's, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I feel better about the Yankees than I did about Oakland. But the Yankees are heating up, which they always do this time of year. I'll give you a day to think about it. Cause and I'm, baseball, you know, in general, I know, and I know you're not a baseball fan like you once were, but baseball is right now, and I'm talking about all the playoffs, as great as it's been in a very long time. You know, because like, all of these series are just, I mean, the Cubs, the Marlins, everybody, it's, it's phenomenal. And, and there's great someone games. who doesn't watch it like I watch football all the time. And I was going back and forth last night, and I was just saying, it was. this is why I don't like baseball. Look, football moves so much faster than they got a clock. If, if they could do one thing in baseball... And I'll give you that. Last night was a goddamn exciting game. Yeah, and the Cubs, and the Cubs games, and, and the Marlins games were you know, incredible. It, I was going in between the the football game and the baseball game because it was exciting. What screwed up the rhythm? And at one point it was pretty much in rhythm. You could watch the the Buccaneers, Colts, then you could unbelievably watch. fast moving game because of the Here, uh, two pitchers. Here's the problem: as the game got later on, the baseball game, when you got the guy that's pitching and he's and he's in a stance, and he steps off the thing for a second, and they go timeout. And then you got the batter who's standing up there. And you got a guy like your guy, the the second baseman for the Red Sox. Todd Walker? No, the... Uh, uh, Damian Jackson. No, Spanish guy. Nomar Garcia Parra. There he is. Shortstop. Same difference. He's up there. He's got on all kinds of gloves, uh, stuff, uh, pads. Uh, he's got to step out of the box so he can redo his gloves. Oh, he always does that. Yeah, well, come on, you're wasting time. You're wasting time. I understand you got to be set, but the thing is, he's standing there. He's got the bat on his shoulder. Then he says to the amp, hold on, time. And he goes to the side, and he's just adjusting himself. He's just fixing himself and strapping himself. Mm -hmm. And th the Oakland guys were doing it, too. This is not just a Red no, I know. Sox thing. No, I know. Yeah. They all do it. They. Um, I read an article where they, they've tried to improve, and they succeeded in improving the average time of uh, of baseball games this year. I, I forgot what the, the numbers were, but they have shortened uh, the games this year. When you get into the postseason, you, you, that, that all goes out the window because they're all trying their different strategies, and you got more catchers meeting with the pitchers and stuff. But you know, when you're talking about time, as far as like a time from start to finish, and you're comparing football to baseball, um, when you're watching a game like a 4 o'clock game, and the game comes on at 4 o'clock and doesn't finish till quarter of 8, that's you know. Great. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'm sorry. Yeah, but that's, I mean, as far as you talk about how long baseball takes that, you know, that's, I don't know what the average is in the NFL, though. I don't know what the average time is. I'm sure it's slow, too, but it seems faster. As I was going between the two games last night, it was like, okay, the Buccaneers have run two plays now. 
And this guy, as it turns out, he was a Boston guy, is still adjusting himself. Mm -hmm. Still putting his gloves on. Right. Putting his gloves on to hit the ball, not putting the glove on to catch the ball. It's a great but, American pastime. Good luck to, to the Red Sox. Yeah. And uh, let me know tomorrow if you want to take a bet on. Because I'd be willing to bet on the Yankees just to make it fun. A new bet. Just to make it fun. Boy, I got a lot of things that I got to think about. Sure. Yeah. And we've not even brought up the Bachelor TV show yet. That's why. I, I mean, the Bachelor TV show for our show. The. You know, not a TV show, but a radio version with right. Mike. See what kind of weekend I have. Okay. All right. Um, listen, we're up on a break, and I'll tell you what we can do. When and the we weekend come... starts tonight for me, incidentally. Oh, yeah. We, we, we can bet what... What is it? It's only Tuesday. I know. Exactly. There you go. So why is, why, why is the weekend starting tonight? Well, yeah, because I, uh, you know, I'm going out with friends. Oh, I Okay? Know. All right, okay. <laughs> you understand? Uh, tomorrow on the show. <laughs> I have to compensate by not having my kids with me, so I'm going to go out and party. What else can I do? Tomorrow we'll have uh, the full uh, reaction of uh, Arnold winning in California. He was declared the winner at 121 uh, West Coast time today on, on the show. When we come back... Now keep in mind, it's another short break, so I'll give you a couple of options. We can try to call crazy disc jockey George McFly. Okay. We can't call my brother about the vasectomy because he's on the road. I spoke to him last night. In a lot of pain. He does want to come on the air and, and talk uh, about his vasectomy. Has he I'm, gotten it yet? That I'm paying for. No, but he got the money and he's been to a doctor. Okay. Um, we do have uh, phobias, sexual phobias, and psychological phobias. The 50 most hated TV characters of all time, uh, sex conventions, uh, Kelly Ripa. I think it's unfair. She's getting this entire rap as being down to earth and wholesome. Mm -hmm. But there was an article, and I've been saving this for a month now in USA Today, full, I mean, front page, two page jobber about about Kelly Ripa, and you tell me if she's not Kathy Lee Jr. Yes, reincarnated. All of those. We have all of those things to choose from. Or we could we could just take dumb phone calls. You know, there's so many choices. I don't know where to begin. They're all good. I don't know. And we don't have, you know, I've got all this other stuff here that we just, we ain't got time for. You know, i tell you what I want to do, but if I did that, you'd hold me responsible for it. That? Take phone calls. But I, last time I did that, <laughs> we got in a whole hell of a lot of trouble. Yeah, well, you see, here's the thing. I think phone calls are great on this show. And I love taking phone calls. Uh -huh. But no offense, I think the show's are a lot better mm -hmm. when you and I do the majority of the talking. I understand. So what we might have to do is maybe take phone calls and uh, just talk over people. <laughs> we could do e Either work. way, we got a break. <laughs> we'll figure out what we're doing when we, when we come back. You want to take one phone call first? I do. Okay. Good. Hello, That's Don and Mike show. Hi, Don and Mike. Uh, hi, Buzz. I'm going to be turning 50 at Christmas, and um, they're a real inspiration to me. I, I appreciate the... See, yeah. do we really need that, Mike? Yeah, I like that. You like that? I like the old guy saying, I'm turning 50, by Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Let's You're see on... how this one goes. You're on the air. <laughs> Hello. 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 Go. Go. No, I just want to say 1918 to Mike. F you. I don't want to take any more phone calls. I don't want to take any more phone calls. I didn't hear what he said. 1918. You know what that means. What's that, Buzz's birth year? No, that's the ball. <laughs> <laughs> now you made me laugh. Out of my anger comes laughter. What a strange show this is. Now, that's, uh, you know, that's what the, oh, Yankee, that's the Yankee fans hold up those signs all over the Yankee Bambino. Stadium. Last time they uh, won a World Series. Okay. Yeah. And I said, well, F you. Okay, one more. Then, cause you, there was one you liked. I don't want to take calls anymore. Hello, Don and Mike. Oops. Hello, Don and Mike this, show. Hello. This is Cindy. Hi. Hi, Cindy. Don't you think Cruz Bustamante looks just like Mr. Spacely? <laughs> Have you I, seen Cruz Bustamante? Yeah, I've seen him. No. Spacely? No. I'll tell you, that one dude is, uh, I, who's the guy with the crossed eyes, Rob? McClintock. 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 That sounds like he's a sheriff on a western. It sure does. Wasn't that an actual show, McClintock? Hey, Something no, like yeah. that. Mr. McCloud. McCloud? McClintock? <laughs> Get me McCloud. He's right next to McClintock. McCloud? <laughs> Either way, we got a break. And now we've got less time to do whatever we do when we come back. Yeah, because we've been messing around here. Right, we'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. She was saying that she was two weeks pregnant. And I didn't believe it because when you're two weeks, just two weeks pregnant, you can't really tell just because you haven't seen your menstruation. Okay, 
Uh, hi, this is Dorm Radio, D-O-R-M, broadcasting live from the basement of the Science Building. Great. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Hey. See, I like this to be too mellow for me, but on Buzz's birthday, I go with me. So like goodbye, Buzz, for his birthday. I must say, from where I sit, I am truly enjoying your colorful pissoir. Thank you. No stinky poon. The Don and Mike Show. All right, we just ran the solicits. 877-365-3636 and the other junk with the phone numbers. Um, I don't know. I think maybe five minutes. Take phone calls. Except we won't take the phone calls. Hmm. Yeah, we're saying we're trying something new here. Okay. We'll just see what people have to say. Good. Just see what they say. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. All right. Now I put him on with some other guy. Hello? Yes. Hey, Dynamite. <laughs> they put us on, just the two of us together. Hey, Don, I just want to let you know who's uh, sponsoring NASCAR now. Mr. Clean. You can go ahead and talk. They can't hear you. Oh, Mike's on number three. Sorry. We there you go. We, they can't hear us, right? They can't hear us. Okay. But now, they're, see, they're not talking to each other. It's unfortunate. They're just freezing up. All right, I'll go to two other ones. The electorate. Over <laughs> there. Hello? Yeah, what's up? Hello? Yeah, Boston. Boston's done. Boston's not even going to make it. I've added another caller. Hello? You know that. Hello? You know that, right, Mike? Mike, Boston's not going anywhere. You know that. Now I'll add another one. Now, the only guy that's Hello. talking no, no is, chance. is the jerk. Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Hello, congratulations to Mr. Mike O'Meara and the Boston Red Sox. Yes, indeed. Uh, there you go. Yeah, they're going real far. Back to yeah, Boston. No, sure. Yeah, that's one of those things. Hello? Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say that of all the people who have been doing. Of all the people who have been doing. This is what happens when we're not there to control. Hello. You see? Hi, everybody. Yeah. Introduce yourselves. <laughs> Here's a bright guy. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. give him a little room. Nice. <laughs> yeah, right. There's the guy that dropped the. Why does Boston guys think so bad? Okay, hold on. A God. Let me get, get it right. Um, Idiot. Hello. Hello. You know the difference between Yankee Stadium and a cactus? Hello. Yeah. Hello. On a cactus, the pricks are on the outside. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What's going on? How about those Boston Red Sox? <laughs> those Boston, Boston Red Sox, man, they're gonna rock all the way. They're in the Cubs. <laughs> they're gonna. Oh, they're gonna take it to the end, and they're gonna win the whole entire thing. It's gonna be like the Florida. 97. Hello? 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 <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey! Hello? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Hey! Hello? Hey! Yeah, this is really much, Gavin. Yeah, I, I like Dick. <laughs> you like Dick? I like Dick. Hello? Wow. <laughs> okay, let me clear all these out. We'll start again. You gonna start with a new group? This is really rude. Hello? Hey there. Hello? <laughs> Hi, I was calling this to the doctor on the mic. I wanted to wish Buzz a happy birthday. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> that we've stumbled on the perfect. Call. This could work. Hey there. <laughs> what is that sound? <laughs> hey there. <laughs> and it's the original guy. Okay, you know what? I know you guys don't like Sacramento callers. I'm just calling to be nice. This is the only talk show that I actually enjoy, and I guess I won't enjoy it anymore. Oh, so stupid. <laughs> she doesn't get it. Uh, she got to go out and vote for Arnold now. Yeah, absolutely. That's sad. Thank you, lady. I think she's gone. Yeah, I know. But hey, hey the, the how you doing, guys? Perfect. Yeah. Hello. He gets it. Hey there. Well, let me try another one. Hello. Bueno, welcome to the Don and Mike Show. We're taking phone calls right now at one eight seven seven three six five thirty six. There's a guy who came ready. Hey there. How you doing, Mr. How you doing, guys? Hey there. Good, good, good. I see. Are you going to be rooting for the Boston Red Sox or are you going to be rooting for the New York Yankees? Hey there. Oh, that's great. I got to hear Let's that. Let's add another caller. 
Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey, welcome back to the Donna Mike Show. How's uh, got the how you doing? Oh, guys? how you doing, guy? <laughs> <laughs> I love it when we let him go. Doing, this is like the equivalent of an going? institution where they've opened the doors. You're doing fine. Jack Kent Cook coming calling from the grave right now. Yes, that's that's how that's 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 Jack Kent Cook. Oh, I mean, no. Everybody have a good time. Hey there. Hello. 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 How you doing? Hello there. Hello there. Back from Dave. You're going to break it. Don't I, do it. I think I have a new Stop favorite bit. Let it go. Yeah, that's, <laughs> oh, that's all the time we have. Don, thank you. Please, one time again. Please do it again before we die. Yeah, yeah. You know, just uh, we tried it for one day, and it was too much the day that we did the show. It's we, great we, to do just like that. We yeah. wanted to try to do the show one day without actually having to speak. That we would be here, right. and it would just be phone calls, and it was when we were on middays, and we were trying anything, and it just, it wouldn't, it didn't flow. That was fun. I enjoyed that. And I think if anything, you've proven that, you know, frankly, the show runs on its own. Yes, that uh, Mike, nor I, nor Buzz, nor Rob, uh, don't need to be here. Just be on autopilot. I said, just uh, yeah. turn the buttons on and let let the people speak. <laughs> In a world where owning a radio that was, was strictly forbidden, one man found a way to bring good news to his people. He made it up. Now, you know, because we didn't get to the stuff uh, tomorrow uh -huh. on the show, uh, just ahead of, of Buzz here, we'll have all the tapes of Arnold accepting victory. He was predicted today at one twenty-one East Coast West Coast time, right, on the show to be the winner. Also, Buzz will have his nudes tomorrow. Hey, his, his uh, girl show, a two girl show for his birthday. We'll have match game tomorrow too. Right, and the, the girls will definitely be here tomorrow because Charlie's telling them to be here at ten a.m. <laughs> right, <laughs> uh, Buzz. What is your lead story today? Today, it's all about Arnold. Ar okay, I'm ready for this. Stay tuned, Stay tuned. for news and comments coming, coming, up coming up on the Don and Mike Show. On the Don and Mike Show. That was very crazy professional. How you doing? <laughs> is the Don and Mike Show. That's the word from Planet Crackpot. The Don and Mike Show. That's the word from Planet Crackpot. Home of the world's dumbest millionaire. The Don and Mike Show. That would be me. I but I didn't pick this song. Ah, no, I right. Hi, Buzz. Hi. It's Buzz's birthday. Uh, he selected the music today for the bumpers. Uh, right. Buzz's new show brought to you by Vermax Sexual Pleasure. Performance enhancer. It's Dr. Devella. Someone call for a doctor? Clinically tested Vermax works. Get it at Rite Aid, GNC, other select retailers. Try it today. Vermax, one triple eight. Try VMAX. Uh, tomorrow... Tomorrow night, come meet all of us. We'll be at the Crystal City Restaurant. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice city bar. I'll be there with Tom Gavin, and Mike will be there with everybody else watching me with Tom Gavin. Watching you, among other things. <laughs> because I'm yeah, and the game will be on, and there will be, you know, where well, you're at a city bar. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, there'll be a lot to uh, to watch. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so come on out, and, and uh, we'd love to meet you, have a drink with you. Watch me be uncomfortable with Tom as I pay off my bet. And uh, <laughs> while you're there, it's not on the menu at the Crystal City Restaurant, but you want to order the Pumpkin Pie Crunch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Chef Boyardee's <laughs> Pumpkin Pie Crunch. <laughs> you know, there's this disc jockey we love goofing on, Rick mm -hmm. The phoniest in the world. This has got to be... You know, I, I, I've said this before, and I'm wasting time by saying it now. I'm so energized about doing the show again. Right. Feeling so good. Yeah. We have so much stuff to get to that we're not getting to it every day. Mm -hmm. There's a disc jockey we love goofing on from Los Angeles, Rick Dees. Rick Gordon! Well, we found a website of Rick Dees's, and one of the links was recipes. Oh, good. Recipes. Who? For instance. <laughs> All right. Chef Boyardee's <laughs> apple cake. <laughs> this is on a disc jockey. Way to website. go, Rick Gordon. Cake. Two cups all purpose flour. There, he's got the Half recipe cup there. Water. It's actually a real recipe. Ooh. With um, Chef Boyardee stuff in it? No, no. Now it's no. Chef Boyardee's. Get oh, it? Oh, oh. Yeah, oh. let me see. Yes, it's D's. Anything to put D's in. Oh, oh, my God. Then it says at the bottom. The, speaking of D's, does the recipe call for any nuts? <laughs> no, no. Then, then it has all D's the nuts. Preheat oven, everything. Uh, prepare cake. Uh, this cake gets a lot of wonderful compliments. 
Bad. So take credit for it. Yield 16 servings. Ooh. Enjoy it, Chef Boyardee's. Boyardee's. Phoniest Los Angeles disc jockey in the world. Phoniest disc jockey ever. He worked in Los Angeles. Phonier than the guy across the street. Than Jack? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. If you could prepare this cake in a high elevation, would, would you? you? Would you? <laughs> anyway, another day we'll go to rigdees.com. Because that's too great. That is fun. That's too great. Rigdon. This is gi gi giant dope head with a with a big, uh, you know, with the uh, the Chef Boyardee hat on it. Whenever we're in Los Angeles and we listen to him, you always have to uh, allow time to pull off to the side of the road to vomit. <laughs> and he's giving the OK sign. Yeah. You know, they don't they don't like Chef Boyardee. Chef though. Boyardee. And he patented the fake DJ smile to the hi. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, here is uh, Buzz, uh, Buzz Girdley. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Speaking of California, it is election day there, and probably... And speaking of guys who have that fake DJ smile, <laughs> hi, Buzz. <laughs> hi. Probably the biggest day of Arnold Schwarzenegger's life. Last-minute survey showed that Arnold will likely be elected governor, despite all the new accusations against him. Predicted today, mm -hmm. uh, officially announced today, at one twenty-one. West Coast Pacific Time on the Don and Mike Show, and we did our unscientific poll. Yeah, Arnold. we're daring. Arnold was the winner with 45% in that survey. Yesterday, though, a 16th woman came forward to say that she, too, was on the receiving end of Arnold's sexually rowdy behavior. Buzz, doesn't everybody get it? Mm -hmm. there, could, there could be a busload of them. There could be 160 would, women. Yeah, now, that, now everybody's become desensitized to it. Mm -hmm. Right, and none of these women are stepping forward. Yeah, and the, trust me, the last thing I want to do is... is <clears throat> Take up for Arnold Schwarzenegger. I understand. But none of these women are standing up and saying, he assaulted me. Yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah, there's a... I think there's a big difference. I mean, somebody, mm -hmm. have, uh, certain uh, spin meisters have tried to portray this like it could be a criminal offense, but I right. I really don't think it, it is. There's, I mean, you know, criminal, and then there's inappropriate, and I think Arnold falls in the very inappropriate category. Sure. And I says, uh, only 16? And the big mistake is that I think the people running against Arnold have pointed out these women that are coming forward that have been groped, when in fact, that shouldn't be the issue. <laughs> the issue should be... You're electing Arnold! But it's fun to hear the details. This woman oh, it is. says it happened on the set of Terminator 2 and again on the set of True Lies. In one case, she says Arnold lifted her shirt to photograph her bare breasts and then <laughs> planted his lips there. Sure, why not? Activist women marched yesterday with signs that read, Arnold, nine. <laughs> but a poll, a poll from Survey USA shows that 57% of the voters will vote to remove Gray Davis from office and that nearly two-thirds of those voters will vote for Arnold to replace the governor. <laughs> well, Two-thirds. You'll hear it all tomorrow on the show. Another, another, we're going to have all of the, uh, the Arnold acceptance speeches, sure. the, the concession speeches by Gray Davis. Uh, are you like me, uh, just wishing that he was American-born? <laughs> because after the governorship, why not president of the United States? <laughs> no rule that can't be re rewritten. That's right. No contract that can't be broken. Let's get cracking. Now, another sign spotted yesterday said, Arnie, Hitler didn't grope. But Arnold won't talk about Hitler or the accusations of sexual hijinks or even the poll numbers. He says he's just having fun. Yeah, wait till he gets in there. Veter veteran. Hanky panky. So Hitler had the hanky panky. <laughs> but I'm the Terminator. And we're going to terminate the great Davis. Thank you. You can move forward with me or you can move backward. With Craig Davis. <laughs> it's that simple, and uh, it was cool to vote for myself. <laughs> and I give myself three months before I do something really stupid <laughs> that puts the spotlight on me, that long. Hitler. Veteran journalists <laughs> covering his campaign say they have seen easier access to sitting presidents than with Arnold. Also yesterday, the wives of sure, David... Sure, why not? I'm a movie star. Come over, look at me. You want to look at me? I'm pretty. The thing is uh, that the crazy reporters will come into the camp, mm -hmm. and then if they have to e e interview me, they'll get to know that I don't understand the issues, mm -hmm. and that's why we've got the security around. But move forward with Arnold or backward <laughs> with Craig Davis. After la vista, baby. I will terminate his governorship. Oh, yes. uh, the group... Uh, the groping. Oh, here's one thing I did hear him say uh -huh. in response to that. Uh, I have the signed statements from twins. Oh. And, I, and I, the yes, first thing I, I thought was, this. I thought that, you know. Well, what do you have to do on a movie set when you need signed statements? Here's the thing. <laughs> when he said twins, I'm thinking the Coors Light twins. Because I've seen that ad <laughs> where they say the Coors Light twins are going to be in Scary Movie 3. Yeah. Uh, I have statements from twins. The twins said I didn't grow up them badly. On twins. 
Everybody says I was a good guy. And it, it took a while to realize, oh, he's talking about the movie twin. Right. I'm talking about the Craig Davis. Okay. Right. And Terminator. And stuff. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, the wives of Davis and Schwarzenegger were standing by their men. Davis's wife says the worst accusation against her husband is that he's dull. I'm quoting her. Right now, that looks pretty good to me. Davis himself... Hey, there's a ringing endorsement. I'd yeah. love for my wife to come out and say that about me. She's saying she'd rather have a husband who is dull than one who is uh, a, a, perhaps a no Nazi sympathizer and a woman groper, I guess, yeah. is what she's implying Whatever. there. He's the one that is responsible for this. Right, I know. Uh, the Smoking Gun website says we may never know exactly what Arnold has said about Hitler. <laughs> the site says the reason is well, Arnold... We already know, Buzz. Ar the, the, the site says the reason is that Arnold bought the rights to the movie Pumping Iron and all of its outtakes. Legally, that means he can destroy whatever footage he wants to destroy, including, as the contract specifies, anything that might be embarrassing or reflect negatively on the actor's personal or private life. This but guy's had it. Here's the thing. This guy's had it in his mind for years sure. that he was going to do this thing. Yeah. We all know what he said, though. We don't have to hear the tape. Yeah. Everybody listening knows what he said. That's the documentation, though. That's where Has the, anybody the... ever watched Pumping Iron? I have oh, watched yeah. Pumping Iron. Sure. It, it tells you a lot about Arnold. Sure does. Hi. Yeah. How are you doing? I doubt you know, that it has, it has a dink. But it has a lot of that very forward, very confident Arnold right. before he's been slickened up. By well, watch, I mean, it, obviously, it's probably, look what he does to Ferrigno. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to be the greatest in the world. Yeah, it's like, hey, you know that, you know I am. And he, he does the intimidation thing. That's why it's such a sad movie. <laughs> uh, and right. anyway, that's where the Hitler comments are. The Hitler, or, yeah, or the were. Hitler. Oh, it was on that film. Arnold got the rights after a court battle in which he was quoted as saying to a female lawyer, you C-word. Well, now, I want to say... <laughs> now, wait a minute to see, you see. I let me quote my good friend, Michael Mann. Mike, what did I call that girl? See? <laughs> That's right, Mike. And whatever happens, Arnold's wife, Maria Shriver, will see? still have a job at MSN, at NBC, rather. See? Right now, she's on a see? leave of absence from her see? post as a Dateline NBC correspondent. The ne see? 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 Network says it wants her back, although it says her assignments may change See? if her husband See? is indeed elected. Arnold's people say Mar See? Maria was See? planning on returning See? to NBC anyway, no matter what the outcome of the election. Right, let me try all three of them at once. Right. Here we go. See? See? <laughs> That's great. Uh, Mike, Bill O'Reilly, and Mr. Hand. The C chorus. <laughs> See? See? Nice comment. <laughs> I mean, nice company. <laughs> See? See? That's cool. Horrible comment. <laughs> See? See? Oh, where's Mike? C. There he is. C. No. C. C. Arnold. C. 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 <laughs> Arnold has relied heavily on his movie career to see him through his speeches, debates, and campaign appearances. You just said C. 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 Yeah. See him through. Mm. See him through. Total Recall this, Terminate that. But he recently adopted <laughs> another theme. <laughs> I like that. Isolate that one, too. <laughs> he recently adopted another theme. It's the 80s song, We're Not Gonna Take It, by Twisted Sister. Oh, God. Frontman D. Snyder. Because D. Snyder and his wife is, uh... C. C. <laughs> Frontman Dee Snyder met Arnold Sunday for the very first time. Dee says the song was actually inspired by Arnold back in the mid '80s. It was from their album "Stay Hungry." Liar! No, they they made this album "Stay Hungry." They named it. Twisted Sister titled that album after Arnold's book came out called "Stay Hungry," and he made a movie of that same title. They say that they called their album that because Arnold had called his book that. I, I swear to God, the, gets, state, the state is going to fall into the sea. It's it weirder I, and weirder. I, it? I says once that I'm elected, all women will go by the name of... Uh, C. C. <laughs> That's with my cabinet, uh, Bill O'Reilly and uh, Mr. Hand and Michael Mara. C. 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 <laughs> As for the sex charges, D. Snyder says, quote, He's a movie star, for God's sake. Men are dogs. If we took all the dogs out of jobs of importance... We have a lot of empty offices, end quote. Okay, you know what that is? That's one douchebag talking to another douchebag on <laughs> douchebag long distance. <laughs> that really is. See? See? <laughs> we'll be right back, buddy. This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. They welcome vicious personal attacks. Don Geronimo and Michael Mara. See, I'm right there with you, Buzz. This would be my pick, yeah. too. Yeah. But when you were listening to the song, uh -huh. let me check out a year on this. Yeah, 
about to say, I'm going to guess like 70. 1970, 71, right in there, yeah. I would have been 12, uh -huh. and you would have been... Uh, 17. 17. Yeah. Because you're 50. Yes, yes, I am. And Rob, you are... I was not born yet. Not born yet. Yes. Bald, bald then, too. <laughs> hey! I would have been... Uh... You didn't hear that, did you? <laughs> what did he say? He said you were bald then, too. <laughs> oh. Hey! <laughs> I would have been 11. <laughs> That's right. Well, you and I are very close in age. Yes. Yes. We are. We all. We are. Yeah, I know. I just hate to say that. I don't know. For some reason, we're all doing the age. That, yeah, you yeah. and I are, uh, what, six months, five months apart? Well, almost the same age. Yeah. yeah. No matter what, we're younger than him. <laughs> Five years. Hi. Hi. And it bothers him. You know, if we're not working together when uh, when Don and I turn 50, mm -hmm. we uh, we have to all, like, maybe have a reunion. Yeah, there's a great idea. <laughs> really should. Because those reunion shows always work out so No, good. no, not a reunion. I'm just talking about come, not a show. Just come to somebody's house. Yeah. Okay. I hope good. you take a moment out to remember me. I will, Rob. Thank you. Absolutely. And we can have it at the home where I'm staying. Sure, and you can have it on my boat where I'll be living. <laughs> I actually think that... Uh, I'll be on the air while we're 50, while I'm 50. Uh -huh. I think there's like 12 days before the contract kicks over. Yeah, yep, you're absolutely right. So I right. think wow. you, you will actually be the one who's out before 50, out of this rat race. <laughs> That's, that makes me feel good. You'll be the, that really you'll does. Be the youngest out of, out of the three of us. You'll be the, one, the youngest one out. That's very cool. And Buzz, you'll be 55. Just about, actually. If, if the contract ends in October... October 1st. Yeah. Okay, wow. well, yeah, just uh, just barely. I guess our last week on the air, I'll be 55. How exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I'm excited. <laughs> now, after all of this today, uh -huh. and, and I yeah. don't think we've given it to you. Uh, no, no, you've you, been very kind. We've, really. we've been trying to be. It's a rough we, birthday. We, you look great. Thank we, you. I agree. You do look I great. You don't, great. Look, you don't even look remotely like 50. Thank you. That doesn't make you feel good, though, does no, it? No, actually, it does. Does it? It does, indeed. All I'm right. very proud of that. We've right. tried very hard mm -hmm. today to bust your balls, but not really bust your balls. I know. I knew from talking to Buzz before the show that he was really right. upset about the fact he's 50. True. Have you thought about the, well, you know, you don't have a beard, but have you thought about what I do, you know, with the uh, taking the gray out of the beard? Uh, you know, if, if I grew a beard back, I definitely would color it, I think. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. I like the way I feel. And Buzz, I feel like a new woman every time I do this. <laughs> you got to color my spot. There you go. Yes, paint your bald spot. And now that you're 50, yeah, let's just have a frank discussion about okay. one thing. Good, let's do it. The hair on your head right now. Uh-huh. What do you do to it? Really nothing. I mean, I... There's I, no color? I there's use, no highlighting? No. Absolutely you not. You don't grease in it at all? No. Wow. This is... I mean, if you look closely, you'll see a little gray here just above the temples. Right. Right here. Because, I mean, if you look at Don and me... Yeah. I mean, uh, really... My, my mother turned it into Bob Barker my, right before your very eyes. My dad's hair is snow white. He looks like uh, Kenny Rogers in that way, but... But my mom never really grayed, and I guess I have, you know, the hair from her side of the family. Kenny Rogers? <laughs> <laughs> so today you would say, I'm hoping you would say, that the experience of being on the show and having your 50th birthday highlighted right. has made you feel better than if you had just sat on your couch uh -huh. and watched TV uh -huh. and, and thought, oh, I'm 50. Yeah. So you feel better coming in here today? I do. And uh, earlier, God bless you, you tried to make me feel better by telling me that, that John Ritter was dead and I'm alive. But I looked it up, and he was actually born in 1948, which means he died at the age of 55. So I still have oh. nearly five years to die younger than John Ritter. <laughs> but still, you're here doing a radio show today, that's and right. he's in a got box. a mouthful of dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So, so there's that. Wait. What is the number one word that would describe the way you feel on your 50th birthday? Uh, Besides old. Well, I was going to say finished. You know, but, <laughs> oh, God. That's what I was getting for. No, I had a neighbor that, that when he had his 50th birthday uh -huh. party, he was... It, it's a depressing birthday. Yeah, it is. Because you feel you like... Because you know, you're not really in the middle anymore. Well, no. Come on, now we're going to do it. Yeah. What do you it, feel like, You buddy? feel like if you were going to have accomplished something great in your lifetime, you would have done it no. by now. Now, see, I completely disagree with that. Well, I, I, I appreciate hearing I that. mean, look at the presidents that are elected after the age right. of 50. Mike, yeah. he's not a president. <laughs> he's a newsman on a disc jockey show. Don't you agree? <laughs> Don't you that, agree that, that it's 50? Feel better. There's plenty of time to take care of sleep. You got, you yeah. got a good no, there's yeah. not. The no. hourglass. I, I look great. Us, I feel great. You know. The days of our lives thing that yeah. you turn upside down. Mm -hmm. Man, there's much more underneath than yeah. there is on top. Yeah, we're at least that, two thirds through. That hourglass is is coming down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I said that to Buzz today, but I really and I meant it. I said, 
Don't worry until 60. Right. Yeah. 60. Hey, how old would David Haynes be? <laughs> You know, someone should call Donnie Simpson and ask him. We should, yeah, somebody find out from Donnie how old David Haynes is. Yeah. That will make you feel better. Our I former so. long-term news guy. Got he was the first news guy on, on on our show. Buzz was on my show, but right, right with Mike and I. And David Haynes worked with, with us for, what, five, six years? Something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And David Haynes is oh, 80. <laughs> Very old. And I bet he didn't look this good at 50, if I do say so. Like he that. Good when we worked with him. <laughs> What's the phone number there? You know what? Give me a... Give me a second. Okay. This is Synergy, too. So this will fall into yeah, the category of our, Synergy. One of our sister stations. You know what? Let me see if I have uh, the tiny guy's phone number, because he might know. Of course, I mean, Jay Stevens. Uh, yeah, Jay, look forward to your call. <laughs> well, I bet, you know, I bet I don't. I, how much do you want to bet he's not important enough to make it in here? No, I guarantee nope, he's not. he is. You got him? I nice. got him. Wow. Congratulations. Let me try him on other. I think that's his cell phone, right? This will make you feel better, Buzz. Good. I got another guy, you know, on a successful radio program. I could use that. Because, you know, it's been us and Donnie for a million years in this town. I know. Survivors, Buzz. That's right. I guarantee a paper won't write anything Hello. about us. Hey, Jay. Hello. Hey, uh, hey, Jay. Yes. Jay, it's Don and Mike. We're on the air. How you doing? Hi, Jay. How are you? <laughs> Here's Jay How's it going? Stevens, who's uh, some vice isn't president. It, isn't it past 7 o'clock? No, he's the vice president of something, and he works with <laughs> at WPGC. Oh, hey, listen. I thought it was like 7.30. I can't believe that you're still on the air. Hey, Jay, uh, today is Buzz's 50th birthday, but just to make him feel better, we were talking about Donnie. How old is David Haynes, really? I don't know. Well, hazard a guess. I don't know. Huh? You don't want to hurt his I, 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 I don't know. If you were just going to throw a dart at an age, well, what do you think he he's pushing Hello? right now? What do you? Oh, come he doesn't on, have my on. he doesn't have my microphone keyed in. Well, what do you think? Oh, you got you there? Seventy. Stop. 60. I mean, do you think he's in his he's in his sixties, right? No. David Haynes? <laughs> no, he think no. I don't think so. Do you know Donnie's phone number? No. You're, his, you're the program director. Yeah, but I don't have it right now with me. Oh, come on, Jay. You've got Donnie's, all his phone numbers. I, I honestly you got the number in his Ferrari, don't you? <laughs> you mean the red Ferrari that has the clear hood? Which one? He's Which got, one? He's, red or the blue? I don't know. He's got a couple of them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, know, you, guys, you guys bust our balls all the time. <laughs> and Donnie Simpson gets more vacation time than we do as well. I know. Like, you, does Donnie? Wow. Yeah. Jay, does Donnie get more vacation time than we do? Uh, it seems like you guys get more. No, no, it's untrue, Jay. Donnie gets no, more. I listen to, every time I listen, it's the best of. <laughs> and every time, every time, not always I a vacation. Every time I listen, it's some guy playing records saying, "Donnie's in the Caribbean this week. Donnie be back <laughs> next week." <laughs> don't know, but he is the 82-year-old David Haynes. <laughs> there. Is there any way you can? I get. Well, he, he's not going to help us. No. I know he's not going to help us find no. out. I, I honestly, I don't know how. You know, I'm going to be, and I'm going to be completely truthful because I rem I think I remember. And if I do my guesstimate, David Haynes would be 74. Stop! No, he is not. <laughs> he would probably be in his early 70s. <laughs> I, I have to concur. He's younger than Buzz. I have to concur. He is not younger than Buzz. I think he's younger than Buzz. Okay. No, wow. Would you be willing to bet? No, he won't. No. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> All right, Jay, thanks. It's just a guess. All right. <laughs> Bye, Jay. See you later. See you guys. Bye-bye. That's Jay Stevens. He's one of the dicks that thinks he's our boss. <laughs> Weasel. Jay, however, Buzz, yeah. let me leave you with this. Right. This will make you feel better. Okay. Jay Stevens, the man we just spoke to on the phone, the right. vice president of something in this company, yeah. he will live longer than anyone else in this room. You oh, know yeah. why? No, why? He's smaller. <laughs> smaller breeds but I, always live longer. What about the tortoise or the elephant? He, Mike, he's, Jay Stevens is like midget. Okay, he's, <laughs> and I'm going to use the empire. no, no, no. You, you, if you want to talk about longevity, they what do they always talk about being around long after the human race is gone? The the insects, <laughs> the insects will be alive. That's right. You know, I, I listen. Take some solace in the fact mm -hmm. you're 50. Right. But there's a guy that works. Hey, what happened to the time? Take a look at the time. There's a guy that works at another station. Who's 20, I'm aware of that now, Rob. 20 years older than you. I'll tell you why sometime. <laughs> I'm just 
just looking at the clock. Look at it. Let's look where the time has gone. I see. We're okay. Okay. Just wanted to check. We're okay. I I, you know, I never used to care about that. I never used to care about that I, at all. It's in our contract. We have to play all the commercials. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. So, Buzz, yes. without further ado, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. That's all. He gave me a look like, don't go there. That's not your territory. <laughs> we got we got 30 or 40 seconds, but it's Buzz's birthday. It is. So, Buzz, why don't you go ahead and, and get us out of here? <laughs> really serious. Go ahead. Take the last 30 seconds of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll, Mike and I will see you tomorrow. Buzz, you have 25 seconds. Here's Buzz. With the kicker, right? Finally? No. 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 no this is now your thoughts. Okay. You have 15 seconds now to give your thoughts and then say good night. Go. My, my thoughts. The, the perfect thing, the best thing about being 50 years old and being in great shape and, and generally feeling good about things is that my thing still works. And I'm thankful for that. And I hope everyone else is as lucky at the age of 50. Good night. Oh, God. Till we meet again. This is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice. And I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. <laughs> <laughs>